my name is Awais Mirza. I would like to welcome you to AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. AutoCAD has been around for the last 30 years and it's an industry standard for computer-aided design. People use AutoCAD in many different professions. In this course, we will start at the beginning by drawing lines, circles, rectangles and many other geometric objects. I will walk you through step by step with topics such as hatching, dimensioning, annotation, attributes, tables, external references, layouts, and create output. In this course, you will create a house project which includes 2D drawing and a 3D model. This course is not designed to get you familiar with AutoCAD tools. Instead, we will use those tools to create our project. By the end of this course, you will be ready to start a career as an AutoCAD draftsperson. Be sure to check out our other courses and subscribe to our channel. So we got a lot to cover, so let's get started. In this video, we will tour AutoCAD 2016 user interface. When you first start a program, you come to this Start tab. In the middle, you have Recent Documents. On the right, if you are a member of Autodesk A360, you can sign in and store your file on the cloud. You can start by choosing a template and you can start from scratch. That's what I'm going to do. This launches the full user interface. At the top right corner, what is called, we have the application menu. And move the cursor to these items. As you can see, they automatically change. If you, if you want to find a command, let's say I will find a command called extrude. So as you can see, we got so many panels on the ribbon. We got the draw panel, modifier panel. Some panels can be extended by clicking this arrow button and it will give you more commands on this panel. There are many tabs on the ribbon. Some of them have drop down. So you just go and so you can go through here and examine how the content is organized. You can also rearrange the ribbon. Go down here and choose 3D Basics. These are the workspaces we have available in AutoCAD 2016. You can make your own workspace. I'll show you how to do that in the later videos. So for now, I will go click 3D Basics. Now as you can see that on the home panel, we have some different commands. These are the 3D commands used in 3D modeling. So the ribbon is being changed by using workspaces. I will go back to my drafting and annotation workspaces. I'll go back and click draft and annotation. You notice that when I go click on drafting and annotation workspaces, it gives me this palette called design feed. I'll just go and close that for now. You can even add commands to this by clicking this button. Let's say I want to add workspaces. I'll just go click that. As you can see now, the workspaces has been added on the top of my AutoCAD 2016. So now I'm able to change workspaces by clicking this drop down menu. But for now, just leave it. On the right, you can search commands and phrases in AutoCAD 2016 Help Center. So on the top, we have this sign in button. If you want to sign in to Autodesk A360, you can sign in through here. Next, we have Autodesk Exchange app, where you can ex access apps on Autodesk. Next, it will show you if you are connected to Autodesk online community. And last, we have this help menu. So this whole area is called a drawing element. On the right, we have view queue. And then we have a navigation bar, which controls some common commands of navigation, just so, such as pan, zoom. And down here, we have a command line. You can type commands to access them by a command line. Most of the time, I'll be using command line to access command throughout this course. On the left we have layouts, layout 1 and layout 2. You can even access them by hovering all over your cursor to the drawing for. 
down here we have a status bar we have a few options here they are on when they are blue and they are off when they are gray you can even customize these commands by clicking the very right corner button called customization if i click on that it gives me access to turn off and turn on these commands let's say i will go and turn on line weight as you can see it turns on and if i click again if i uncheck this it will turn it off in this video i will show you how to customize the appearance we will see how to customize our ribbon ribbon has commands panels and tabs you can change the appearance of the ribbon by clicking this button click on it one time and you will change this to panel to icons and if you hover over to these icons you will see the panel appears down here if I click this button again we minimize to panel titles as you can see now if you hover the your cursor to the to the titles it will give you the panel and the commands if I click it on one more time we go to most minimalistic view now we simply see only tabs so now if I click on the tab it will open the full ribbon with commands and panels so I go ahead and click that again and that's what I'm gonna use that's how I'm gonna use it throughout this course and now I'll show you how to change workspaces AutoCAD user interface is highly customizable to show you so you go to the workspaces by clicking here and workspaces setting and there's another way to do that is you can go at the bottom here and you can go and click workspaces setting so I go ahead and click on that you can select your workspace over here by clicking this drop down menu if I go and switch workspace to 3d basics and then I'm gonna go and click over here to go back to my drafting and annotation so as you can see when I go back to drafting and annotation this dialog box appears to change that what you have to do is go to the workspace setting and automatically save changes go over here and so if you check this dialog box what it does is it saves your workspaces looks so now if I go click OK and close this dialog box and then I go and change my workspace to 3d basics and now we go back to drafting and annotation as you can see that dialog box did not appear this time because AutoCAD is always saving my looks of workspace so to turn it off I go back and then do not save the workspaces now but now we have saved the previous workspace so now that dollar box will never appear so if you ever wanna bring that dollar box back what you have to do is type design feed and click design feed open so now that dollar box came back so now my workspace is not storing the current look of my workspace so to do that go to setting workspace setting and then automatically save workspace changes that will record it back and every time I change the workspaces let's go ahead and go to 3D basics and then go back to drafting annotation as you can see that box will appear again you can also go to the view tab which is present in every workspace to turn off navigation bar view cube and UCS icon go click all of them as you can see we just turned off navigation bar view cube and UCS icon but I would like to turn it back on because I want to work with these these um, options I will turn off file tabs and layout tabs these are just my personal preferences it's up to you guys whether you want to keep them on or off but these are my personal preferences I would like to keep my workspace clean so now you know that AutoCAD is highly customizable you can customize it the way you want it okay so now I'm going to customize AutoCAD the way I want it it's up to you guys 
even you don't follow along with this customization you will still be able to follow along with this course so I will go and click on option and in this dialog box first of all what I have to change is go to user preference right click customization so I go click and I just turn on the right click so even if I enter double enter what it will do it will repeat the last command so I'll go close, apply and close, and then in the drafting, I have to um, make my preferable size of auto snap marker size and aperture size. So I'll just go and increase that a little bit. Yep, and increase that as well. Yep, and then I like to display the uh, crosshair size in the whole screen. So I'll go and just drag it all the way to hundred apply click ok so this is the way I, I, I like to work in AutoCAD workspace so for your keyboard just type CUI which will give you a dialog box of customized user interface and let's say if you want to change the command on the home panel and you want to add another command next to the line you go to the ribbon go to panels and go to home and draw, home and 2D draw. As you can see now, you got row one, you got row two. So if I drag this construction line to the row one, in the panel preview, you can see that construction line has been moved from row two to row one. I go and select that. And if I drag this a little bit down, I can change the size of the icon. I'll go and change it to large image. And apply. Click OK. So in the few moments, the command should appear. As you can see, the construction line is appear on the home panel. I'll go and change that because in the start, I don't recommend you guys to customize a lot of things in AutoCAD. In AutoCAD, we have shortcut commands called aliases to access our command. For example, if you want to draw a rectangle, you can type REC, which gives you a rectangle command. So I'm going to customize my aliases command by typing alias edit. And this dialog box let me um, change my commands. The most frequent quant command I use in AutoCAD is copy command so the shortcut key for that is CO but I use it a lot so I'm gonna change it to C and click edit and change it to C it's up to you guys if you want to change it but I like to keep that copy command LSC so I go press OK it's it's gonna ask me that the C is already apply to circles but I don't use circle a lot if I want to use circle I can type circle but copy command I use it a lot so I'll go and click yes so now if you type C it will give you C as a copy not C as a circle so in the end of this video I'm gonna talk about finding help in AutoCAD to find a help you need to know what you're looking for if you don't know what you're looking for, that's another story. But if you heard of the command and you want to read about it, you can type the command and type a keyword, a phrase. Let's say I go type circle. Press enter. And this AutoCAD 2016 help dialog box will give you a command circle. And if I go click about circle, it will give me information about it. So you're more than welcome to read this information, but if you don't know what you're looking for, that's another story. Alright guys, this was the end of this AutoCAD 2016 user interface tutorial. Um, I'll speak to you guys in the next video, and from the next video we'll start drawing objects. We'll start by drawing line, circle, rectangle, and many other geometric objects. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. And What's going on guys, this is our second video of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. 
In this video, I'm going to show you how you can open files, manage files, save them, create a backup copy, and how you can recover your destroyed files. So I'm going to go and open a few files by clicking this icon. And I'll select um, map, room, and architect. You can multiple uh, you can select multiple files by holding control and if you click open it will open these files so click open so now as you can see that my files are opening and these tabs every tab contains every single file so i'll go and just go to array 2 and now what i'm going to do to save this file as you can see that if i go to my eraser tool and click on it and select this line and press spacebar it will erase this line and there's a small asterisk sign appear next to my array too which is basically telling me that the file has been changed so if I go ahead and save my file and as you can see now the asterisk sign has gone so every time you make changes to your file you can see by looking at here that your file has been changed or not you can save files by many ways in AutoCAD 2016 by clicking on this icon button you can press ctrl s or you can type QS from your keyboard. I think typing QS is pretty faster for me, so I use it a lot. So now AutoCAD save these files automatically after some times. You can change that time by going to option, go to this open and save. Here you can see that automatic save is set to five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to, now let's leave it five minutes. And down here you can create a backup copy as well. So it's very useful when let's say your system shut down and you lost your file so the backup copy will always be there so make sure to click on it and make sure it's checked you can access option by just typing op from your keyboard and press spacebar it'll open the options let's talk about how to recover file there's a command for this if you type recover from your keyboard it will open this dialog box and i go and select this room and I go open so it's gonna take a time and just analyze the file and it says now that auto audit detect no errors in recovery database so there was no error basically in this file so that's how you can recover files sometimes files give you error but you can always use this command recover to recover your files if you're signing to Autodesk A360 then your file will always be uploaded to cloud so if you're not signed in, make sure you keep a backup copy of your every file. If you've got a big project and try to save it on two places, so in case you lose one place, like there's an error in the file, so you can always go and open the other file. So now I will discuss units. The most important thing you want to do before you start working on a project is to select the unit. So how you do that? If you type unit from the keyboard and press enter, You get this dialog box so as you can see that this file is set to decimal but i'm going to go and change this to architect so architect system is basically foot to inch system i'm going to go and change this precision to one by eight so basically what it is is 18 inches you can type one slash eight which will consider as one foot and eight inches. You have different options here. Let's say I'll use the decimal system, which use the metric system. We have engineering units here. If you're working on an engineering project, you can change that to engineering. Engineering units basically based on feet and unit as well. So we have a fractional units. They are inches only. And these are used by cabinet makers. So at last we have scientific units. I'm not gonna go into the scientific unit. So in this course we will be working in architectural units. So let's go ahead and select that and click OK. Now we have a look how we measure angles. So I go and type unit and go to units again. And down here we have a direction button. So if I click on that, so east is zero degrees. So that means from going left to right, is de zero degrees from here to top is 90 degrees that's how the AutoCAD direction control works so I just go and keep east which is zero degrees click OK press click OK if you want to quickly change between units 
down here on the status bar we have this architect decimal scientific so you can change your units from here as well but I keep it as architecture and there's another thing I want to mention that I don't recommend changing your units from here because you can't control your position you can't control your direction so basically it's just a quick way to control your units but I don't recommend you to use them you can even turn them off by going here and click this button so it will go away but I'll keep it on so in the next video we'll talk about navigating drones alright guys thanks for watching if you like this course please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel and what's going on guys in this video we will discuss panning how to pan our drawing first I will show you the following way to use pan command and then I will tell you the shortcut key and a shortcut way to do it so to turn on your pan command you can type P press spacebar or enter and as you can see now the cursor changed to hand tool and now you can click and drag just want to mention one thing here that we're not actually moving or drawing we're just moving our camera to view different parts of the drawing so let's say I'll zoom in and I want to see the other part of the drawing so I can just click and drag and as you can see I can move my camera and see other parts of the drawing okay so we got three options here to get out of the command press escape or enter to exit or right click to display okay I'll go and press escape just wanna tell you guys escape is the universal command to get out of any command in AutoCAD so I'll go press spacebar what it does is basically it just toggle on the previous command what we used you can I'll go and press escape again you can use enter as well to get the previous command on and I actually set up the right so let's say I'll zoom in and I wanna see the other part of the drawing so I can just click and drag and as you can see I can move my camera and see other parts of the drawing okay so we got three options here to get out of the command press escape or enter to exit or right click to display okay I'll go and press escape just wanna tell you guys escape is the universal command to get out of the any command in AutoCAD so I'll go press spacebar what it does is basically it just toggle on the previous command what we used you can I'll go and press escape again you can use enter as well to get the previous command on so if I click right and you can see we got these options I can just switch to these commands directly from the pan command by clicking right click okay if you go to the zoom you see your cursor changes to the zoom and now you can click and drag down to zoom out click and drag up to zoom in and to go back to your pan command you can right click again and go to pan and then pan around okay now we'll look at the other command which is old panning command if you learned AutoCAD long time ago and then you wonder that is are those commands still exist in AutoCAD all those commands you can talk along by pressing dash and then I'll go right P and as you can see now we got the different panning command it's asking me to specify base point or displacement so what I do now is I have to specify a base point I'll click here and I'll just drag this line to about here and I click as you can see that our drawing has been panned to that that much so this is the these are the old commands but these are not useful nowadays we've got better commands like if you use the general panning command currently in AutoCAD 2016 it's worked much better but the best way you can pan in your drawing is by holding your mouse wheel as you can see when I press the mouse, mouse wheel it changes to the hand the cursor changes to the hand and now I can hold and drag wherever you want to there this is the easiest way and most commonly used way to pan around into your drawings I want to draw a circle I will go and draw a circle I will specify a base point but let's say I want to I'll just find out that I want to draw a bigger circle so we can use panning command by it's called a transparent panning command basically if you use the mouse wheel it will let you pan around to your image while you're making your circles so that means that any command you're in you can still pan around by holding your mouse wheel down and drag around it is very useful I use it a lot and you're gonna use it a lot so get your hands on it okay so we look at another way of panning type OP to go to the option and then in a display you got display scroll bar if I toggle it on and apply and now you can see that our we have our scroll bar on the left and bottom so I can actually just move my scroll bar up to pan 
around now. So let's go, I'll just go zoom out and then I'll just move my scroll bar. As you can see that we are moving our point of view now by panning. So it's not very useful anymore, so I don't really keep my scroll bar on in AutoCAD. So I'll just go ahead and just turn it off. That's it for now guys. If you like my video, click on the like button. Be sure to check out my other videos and follow along with this course. I'll see you guys in the next video. And the next video is going to be about Zoom Command. And I'll see you guys in there. Cheers. Hi guys, in this video I will discuss the Zoom Command and many of its options. AutoCAD has the capacity to zoom in indefinitely without a loss of any quality. This is a canvas to a program like Adobe Photoshop which is a raster program. In a raster program you zoom in and you will find the pixel that the image is made of. In AutoCAD when you zoom in you just keep going and you never run out of the pixels. This is because AutoCAD is a vector based program and its functionality is based on math. The math is what's behind these objects. A line is defined by its endpoints and that means you can zoom in basically infinitely. So now we'll look at a zoom command. If I type Z and press spacebar, I can get to the zoom command. I've got three options here. All, center, dynamic, extend, preview, scale and window and object. See that we have the blue letter in all. That means if I type A and press enter or spacebar, this will zoom in all. Let's say if I type A, press spacebar, this will zoom the whole workspace. I'll go back to my zoom command. Let's go turn on my zoom command and press A. It didn't do nothing. You know why? Because that's the only object I've got in my workspace. So what I do now is I go and draw a circle over here. Um, that's right and now I'll go press Z spacebar and then go E spacebar again and you see that it zoomed in it zoomed the whole workspace so my but my favorite method to zoom in or zoom out is by scrolling up and down up mouse wheel if I scroll up you can zoom in you can scroll down to zoom out so this was a quick tutorial of how to zoom in and zoom out in AutoCAD and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is OS again, back with another tutorial of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. In this video, you will draw a AutoCAD most common object line. Before we begin, I'm going to make sure that we toggle off anything on the status bar. So toggle off display grid, toggle off your snapping reference, toggle off your 2D reference points, pretty much everything you need to turn off except this icon. What it is basically, it's a hardware acceleration. So if you turn it off, your AutoCAD will not work properly, uh, it will lag a little bit. So I would just recommend that, just keep it on. You can actually hide it by clicking here and you can hide it if by unchecking graphics performance, it will go away. If you check it again, it will come back. So, I'll turn off everything on the status bar. So, so now we can draw a line without any distraction. So, let's get started. On the draw panel, go to the line tool and click on it. So now pay attention to the status bar, what it says. It's saying line specific first point. So what it means is basically choose the first point where you want to start a line. So I'll just go and click anywhere on the on the screen. I click here. As you can see that now we got another option down here. It says specific next point or undo. So if I click again here it will draw a line. As you can see the lines command is still working. So you can draw as many lines you want. As much lines you want. And what it's doing is it's basically creating a separate object. Let's say I'll select this part of the line. And as you can see, it's a sudden click here and start drawing my line. As you can see now, when I just finish my second object and I get another option here saying close. So what if I just press C and enter? Or uh, there's another way. You can actually come up here and then click on close. What it was going to do is it's going to actually close the line the way it started. 
So the first object we started making, it's going to go all the way there and close it. Okay, now we have a look at the time sensitive line. So let's say I'll draw another line. I'll start from here and then I'll finish here. And now I'm going to go and click right on the mouse. And now you can see I've got close and undo options here, but we've got a few more options here. But I'm just going to click enter for now. Time sensitive right click. You can go to option by clicking here and going option or you can just type OK on the keyboard and press enter or spacebar it will take you to the options and now on the user preferences there is one option there right click customization click on it and turn on time sensitive right click so what it does basically let's say you want to draw a line and then to close the command you always have to press enter or spacebar but now we can use right click on the mouse before this 250 millisecond and it will work as enter or spacebar so let's go and draw another line okay I'm gonna go and draw another line I'll just click on the mouse wheel hold it and I can pan around as well and I've shown you this um, in the previous video so I'll just draw a line now go up go up go up and now to end the line, I can press spacebar, enter. But now what I can do is, if I right click, it will do the same thing. As you can see now, it gets really efficient by working a lot of um, projects on a big project. So if you have the right click as enter, then you can just type it, just quickly click on it and then close the command. And to go back to the previous command, you can quickly right click on the mouse and it will start a line again. So that's pretty pretty good way to work on a bigger project. So you don't have to go all the way there to click on the line. So just right click, it will start the previous command. Let's go and turn on this dynamic input. And now I'm gonna go and start a new line. And now you can see when I go down here on my workplace, I see those two interactive elements. These are basically our X and Y. Let's say if I move my mouse to the right, as you can see the X element, which is the first one, is increasing. If I go up, you can see the Y element is increasing. So now we have these interactive elements by turning on this dynamic input. So I go and start the line. And now, so now as you can see, we have different controls. We got the angle of the line, we got the length of the line. And now if I move around, you can see that the coordinate system changes as well and the angle changes as well. So the zero degrees is x-axis to the right horizontally and 90 degrees is vertically straight up. Okay, to show you guys how this dynamic input works, I'm going to go and change my units to architecture. To do that, I'll just type unit on the keyboard and you get this dialog box so now change this to architecture precision I'll keep at 1 by 8 and our insertion scale is inches so click OK and now let's say I draw a line I start a line by pressing L and right click or spacebar or you can enter as well so I just go type spacebar and then now I start the line from here let's say from here so now if I go to the right as you can see I got two electric elements one specifying the length of the line and the other one is the angle so what I'm gonna do I'll just go and say let's say I'll click here and I want to draw a line about two feet or three feet here so what I do is but I want to draw it to 45 degrees angle and I can't, it's really hard to specify the 45 degree angle by dragging the mouse. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type, I'm going to press tab and it's going to take me to the next invective element. Over there, I'm going to type 45 and enter. As you can see now that what line was drawn by 45 degree angle. So now let's say I'll go and I want to draw a line that much length. And, but I want to draw minus 45 degrees so let's say 
the angle would be minus 45 so I'll just leave my mouse here and then press tab again and minus 45 degrees and once you press enter as you can see now the line is drawn on minus 45 degrees you could go 90 180 225 let's say if I go 225 now I'll keep that length and I go 225 so as you can see oops I actually typed the length of the line okay so now I'll show you another thing now what you can do you don't have to end the command if you draw a line mistakenly what you can do you can always go click undo or you can type u and spacebar or right click it will go back to the previous stage and now to undo I'll show you one more thing here is basically anything come up on the status bar on a command line sorry you need to pay attention to it so let's say on the close the C is blue that means if you want to turn on this command you need to type C anything come up here you look at it and then say whatever is blue on the on a command that means you type that letter and press enter right click or spacebar that will toggle that on so for now I'll type C and spacebar it will go back to the starting point of the line on the status bar we got an option here called ortho let's say if I toggle that on and I go to line start drawing a line and now if I move my cursor it's taking only four angles 0 90 180 and 270 so what ortho does is it just gives you four angles it keeps you on on a track let's say you want to draw a line on x-axis you can turn on ortho and you can keep your mouse wherever you want and draw it will draw a straight line on a zero degree so let's say you turn on the ortho and you are in the middle of drawing a line I'm going to give you a shortcut key to turn it off and turn it on if you press F8 it will toggle off ortho you can toggle back on by pressing F8 alright guys thanks for watching that's it for line and I hope I covered pretty much everything about line, drawing lines and AutoCAD. So if I missed anything, just drop down a comment and I will try to answer your question. And thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video we will look at the circles. again I'm back with another tutorial this tutorial is going to be a bit longer because I'm gonna try covering basic drawing objects in AutoCAD 2016 I will cover in this video I will cover circles arcs eclipse splines polylines rectangles and polygons so let's get started I'm gonna start a new drawing here but I'm gonna go open a template I just made before in later videos I will show you how you can make templates as well so I can start a drawing by opening a template. How do we do that is by clicking this arrow button and then I just made template before a wise 2D start so I'll click on that. So there you go, we got our drawing. So now I'm gonna show you quickly that what changes I made in this template. So I'll go type units. It will take us to unit dialog box. I've changed this to architectural precision is one slash four. Unit scale is inches. So I click OK. And there's another thing I did in this template is drawing limits. So my x axis is 500 feet and y axis is 500 feet as well. So I'll start with circles in this video. I'll go and click this circle icon. And then now it's going to ask me to specify first point. So I can click anywhere in my drawing area. Let's go, I click up here. And I drag my cursor. As you can see, once I drag my cursor away from the specific point, it's going to start drawing a circle. And it's going to ask me, I can define a radius here. Let's say if I go and type 20 feet. Okay, and now it's my radius of this circle is 20 feet. I can check that by clicking on it and go to my properties 
panel and as you can see the radius is 20 feet diameter is 40 feet so I'll go and cancel and delete this circle I delete this circle by pressing E this is erase command select the object enter and it's gone you can delete by pressing delete key on a keyboard as well so next circle we're going to look at is diameter so it's the same circle specify first point drag away and specify your diameter let's go ahead and do it I click drag and I go 40 feet now I just want to mention one thing down here as you can see my diameter is set to 40 feet already if I don't click and press enter or spacebar it will draw a circle with diameter of 40 feet you know why because recently I specified a radius 20 feet so diameter is double than radius so that's why the AutoCAD automatically set my radius sorry diameter to 40 feet because I just specified radius before so I'm going to try 40 feet and go OK and I go select go to my properties panel as you can see my diameter is 40 radius is 20 so this is very simple circle command you can toggle on this command by pressing CI the full command is circle but if you type CI AutoCAD will automatically complete this for you so I go and select a circle I cancel the circle command and go back to my circle in a draw panel so I go and click this arrow button and I select two point circle what does it mean is basically I, I need to specify two points and AutoCAD will draw a two point circle between those objects so to simply show you I'm going to go and draw a line I go draw a line, one line click enter or click right click to end the command and remember in the last video we turn on the time sensitive click so if I go and right click on the mouse it will turn on the previous command so I, can, I don't have to go and click line command again so I go and draw another line enter a spacebar it's your per personal preference you want to get used to by pressing spacebar enter or right click on a mouse button I'm used to with spacebar so it works for me so now I go and click this arrow down here and select two point circle and now it's going to ask me two points so it's going to ask me to specify the first point and then specify the second point so I go and click here and then as you can see it's drawing between these two objects okay let's go and draw another line I'll go draw another line by pressing L that's line command so AutoCAD will complete that for me I'll go and draw a line let's say here okay so now I've got to go and select three points circle you go and select that now I have to specify three points and then AutoCAD is going to draw three point circle between these three objects so I go and select that one and then that one and then you can see that one so the circle cross those three points where we selected so that's a three point circle and it's going, I'm going to delete these three lines and I'm going to try making a shape with my line command let's go and draw a line okay so let's say you got a you got a diagram here now and now if you want to draw a circle between these three objects and constrain that between these objects you can do that by selecting 10 10 10 so it's a tangent basically it's gonna as you can see in the help menu it's, it's select three points and try to constrain the circle between those points so select that and then when I hover over my cursor to the line as you can see that green icon appears that means it doesn't matter where I click as long as I've selected that line I'm good so I select here and the second one I select there third one select here and now as you can see AutoCAD automatically calculated and draw a three tangent circle for us there's another command here with the radius what it does it's the same tangent it selects two tangents in one radius so I go and select 
let's say I'll go draw another another object let's say I'm draw a circle let's go and draw another circle here okay so now I'm going to draw a circle between these two objects I can go and select 10 and 10 let's go 10 10 and to radius I'll specify that one there and there you go you got the circle there between these two objects okay now there's one thing I just want to talk about here let's say I draw a simple circle I select that simple circle there and I, I want you to draw three point circle so to do that I don't have to go all the way back and drag a click on this arrow button and select this three point circle I can actually do it by clicking on a command line or you can do that by shortcut key as well just type 3p I told you guys before that anything with the blue here you type in and it will totally it on so I got three point and one two three that's it so anything on a command line you need to pay attention to command line anytime you're working in AutoCAD so I'm going to select circle again I can specify a two point circle, I can specify a tangent, tangent radius, or I can specify a TTR. Well, TTR is just T. Press, press T, and one, two, three. You know why? It's not drawing because tangent only works with an object. You cannot draw a circle without any object. So I go and draw quickly, a, let's say, three circles. And I've got three circles here and I'll draw circles between these three circles. So what I do, once I've drawn the circle, circle command is still there, so I can go and type T. And then I go and click here, click on the second one, click on the third circle. Done. So as you can see why it didn't work, because that is too far. That's too far to calculate. That's why AutoCAD just did it automatically for us. If it was close, it could constrain that circle between these three objects. So I'm pretty sure that I've covered everything about circles now. So if there's any questions about circle, drop down a comment and I will answer your questions. And you can follow me on Twitter and directly message me if you have any questions. Okay, so now we look at arc. If you go and click this arrow button down here, you see we got a lot of different kind of arc here. So the first one, the basic one is three point arc. I've drawn a door diagram where you can actually specify a door to show you guys how arc works. So what now I'm going to go and select this basic arc and let's say I have to specify three points now. I'm going to specify first point, second point, and then let's say that one. So that's how you draw a three-point arc. Okay, now we look at the different kind of arc here. We look at the start, center, and end. So I'm going to select start, center, end. So I'm going to select start point here, center here, and I'm going to select end point right there. So we successfully made our door swing. So what does that mean basically? You need to specify a start point of the arc center and end point and the next one I'm going to talk about is start center and angle so select that command okay I show you now that how the arc work basically I'm just going to go and delete this and then select that same arc start center end so if I go and select the first one here center point that one and that last one is about here so as you can see, the arc work work as a counterclockwise. That's kind of problem. But in some cases, when you're working on drawing, um, you need to work with counterclockwise. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But we'll talk about it in later videos. So for now, just to let you guys know that arc work as a counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm gonna go and draw three point arc now. To show you a bit more about the arc, let's go and I draw this arc. And now I go and select this arc. You see these three vertex points we got. Okay, so now the first one I'm going to show you is how are your cursor there? And once it turns red, then you can click and you can basically move the arc 
wherever you want to move. Let's go and check out that one. If I go and fill, once it turns red and then I click, I can actually move that and I can stretch it where I want to stress, stretch. So, okay, so there's another thing I'm going to show you, okay? Um, if you go and hover over and you get two options here, it says stretch or lengthen. Lengthen means if you draw a line, let's say, I'm going to go and draw an arc. Let's say I've got this line here and I'll draw three point arc now. I go draw, draw, and draw. And let's say you want to draw at the end of this line there. What you have to do is just select this arc, hold on the button, and then click on lantern, not the stretch. Stretch I showed you before. You can move and stretch your arc, but if I go lantern, I can just reverse the arc. Let's say I can make more. I can push it back. You know, I can um, decrease the size of the arc. So I can go and click that and then I can just reduce the size of the arc. There's another thing I'm going to show you, okay? Let's go, you select this arc and then you click here and then shift, hold down the shift button and right click. And now as you can see, you get a lot and a lot of options there. These are the object snapping options, what I will talk about in a later video. But now you can see you got this options just to show you that if you hold down the shift button and then right click you will get a lot of options let's say you want to select endpoint okay so you want to go and select the endpoint now let's get any other object got okay I'll go and draw another arc now just quickly I draw an arc and I'll draw another line there let's say you want to attach this end of the arc to this end of the arc so you can go and select the arc hold on the shift button right click and select endpoint so once you select endpoint you can drag this in and put that to the that endpoint so now just try another arc here okay so we're gonna look at this continue arc now what it does is basically if you select this one it's gonna start a tangent from the previous point you left off so if I go and click here, as you can see I've got the arc started from the point I left off. So I can make it very, very good, I guess, diagrams about this. We'll talk about it, where you can use these kind of arcs in the in the main projects when I'm going to start making a project videos. So you can go and continue the game. So you can keep going. You can make pretty awesome shapes with this. Okay, we covered the continuous the command. So now with these arcs, just try these arcs. All of all these arcs doing the same thing. It's just a matter of starting the point, center, and ending the point. Let's go and maybe start this one. Start end and radius. Start end and direction. You know, just try, try out, and you will find out. You see now, if I make this arc, I can specify the direction of the arc. Okay, and the last thing with arc, I'm going to tell you guys, let's go and draw this three-point arc. And then, as you can see, we keep an eye on the command line. If I go and s press C, and it's going to ask me to specify the center point of the arc. As you can see now, it's basically drawing a circle now. Because it's going to draw around that radius what I give it. So now, with these, these kind of arcs, you can actually change this option. Let's say it's center, start, end, yeah? So I center, start, end, and now I've got these options. I'm going to change the length. I can um, define angle of the arc. So just keep an eye and keep trying this arc. So in the later videos, when we're going to start a project, and then we'll look at it, how can we use these kind of arcs in our practical project. So that's it for now for the arc. Any, any questions, put down the comment and I will talk to you about the next object. Okay, so now we look at Eclipse in AutoCAD. I've drawn two lines 
to show you how it lips work. It's just like an old shape, it's a circle. But uh, So to draw an eclipse, I go and click on the eclipse command on a draw panel. Or I can type ELL -L, and I think I will complete that for us. And now to, to specify eclipse, you need to specify any point of the eclipse. Let's go and I go select that point and I go select this point and then you can see that we can draw our eclipse. Down here I've got a rotation option, I'll show you in a moment. So if I just turn this on, it's going to rotate. It doesn't really matter in 2D, but when we're going to start working on 3D, it does matter. So that's how you draw eclipse. And now we'll try another one for that, but I'm going to go and show you another command point. So if you go PO, you can specify a point. Let's say I will just specify one point here. I go and specify another point by pressing spacebar, which toggle on the previous command. So I go specify that and I specify another one center point there. Okay, to working with Eclipse, you're gonna make sure that you are you toggled on this object snap by pressing F3 is a shortcut key, or you can just turn on and make it blue. And then right click this sorry click on this arrow there and then you gotta make sure that you need to turn on the node what node does is basically let's go if i turn this on and i go and draw a line i can select this end point i can select midpoint and i can select another end point but if i go and turn off this node there as you can see if i turn on the line command and i can't see i can't select this point to select the point, I need to turn on this node. So once I go and start a line, I can select the node now. So for that, I'll, you make sure that you turn on node and then go to Eclipse and then start drawing Eclipse and you can specify your center point there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another type of Eclipse here. Is Ecliptical exclip. What it does is it's pretty much the same, but we got a few more options here. Let's go and uh, define a center point. Okay, I'll go and define this uh, by pressing C, enter, and now I have to specify center point. So I select this center point, and now I go my take my axis to my end point. As you can see, it drew the Eclipse, but we've got a few more options here. If I just press enter, and after that, it can ask us to define the distance now. So I'm going to go and select the distance here, and now I can define the parameters. Go parameter, and I can define the parameter as well an angle of the eclipse. As you can see now, I can define what parameter and what angle I can want to define. So that's how you work with Eclipse. You will have a great idea when we're working on a practical project. So for now, this tutorial is basically just to give you an overview of the basic drawing objects. So the next object I'm going to talk about is... Okay, now we look at Eclipse. Sorry, now we're going to look at splines. So you turn on the spline, I'm going to give you another trick here. To do that, I'm just going to go and insert and I'm going to click on attach and I'm going to go and bring this image. It's an island somewhere in the world, but I want to trace the, the boundaries of this island. So I go and click that, turn this on, and now it's an image in AutoCAD. But I want to trace these boundaries. I can do that by choosing spline so i go and click here we got two splines here spline fit and spline cv so i go and click on spline fit first to show you what's going on before you do that you make sure you turn on off your object snap or auto because these two options can get away in in using spline so i'll just go and click 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 as you can see I can trace the boundaries of the island 
So I'm just going to stop here now to show you what's going on because if you want to practice you can keep going with this picture but I'm just going to stop now. Okay, so once I turn off my command, I'll go and check this spline. You see these group points there? I can just go and move them around and edit my spline. I can even go and let's say I want, I've got this here, but I want to I'm gonna I want to push this here, and I want this to a little bit go outside. So what I can do, I can go up here and add a fit point. So I can just click anywhere I want, and I can add a fit point, and then I just grip and drag the outside. I can even remove my fit point, and I can stretch, which is basically a default command to after gripping these vertex so pretty much that's it you can use spline to trace your islands or any drawing any jpeg files so now you know how, can, how you bring the jpeg files in there to trace the boundaries are you making a 3d model and you want to trace those pictures so you can do that as well we will look at those options later in the in the course but now this is how you can use spline well just go ahead and try the other spline which is spline cb i click that and i start trying again i'll go this side this time as you can see the spline is not actually drawing where I'm clicking it's keeping the radius it's keeping the momentum basically so I just gotta keep clicking 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 and clicking and enter and now what you can do you can click and you can actually drag this out you can see that even if I'm dragging that all the way there it's constraining the, the position it's not destroying my spline so I've got a few more options here just like before I can stretch vertex, I can add vertex to it, I can remove, I can refine vertex as well. So I can just add vertex, refine, you see that now? And if I go and let's say I will select this and shift and right click and now I've got a few more options here, I can choose my snapping option, I can turn off and turn on my snapping option there. So this is basically a very simple command spline and it is used to plot a lot of drawings like big drawings you want to draw boundaries around it or you want to plot a curvy shape things you can do that by using spline so pretty much that's it so let's talk about next object okay guys let's talk about this very basic object in AutoCAD a rectangle if you hover over that, as you can see, it's telling you that you need two points to draw a rectangle. I go and select rectangle, and I specify my first point, and I drag it down, and I'll specify my second point. So that's how you draw a rectangle. But let's talk about it a bit more. So I select that, and I can just change, and I grip my vertex, and I can move around. If you want to change this line to arc, you can do that as well. You can just go and then click on convert to arc. It will convert, convert that line to arc. That's simple. I can bring my arc back to line. Hover over, convert to line. I can drag and stretch as well. So that's how you can draw arcs and make the shapes whatever you want so let's go I'm gonna go delete this arc and I'm gonna go and select the arc sorry select the rectangle again I can type REC to turn on rectangle and now before I specify my first point as you can see I've got three options here chamfer, elevation, fill, thickness and width so if I press down arrow or right click So if I go and start my rectangle command 
And as you can see, I told you guys before that anything with the blue, C A F K V W, it's those letters can turn on those commands. So I go and show you the fill light first. What fill light does? So I type F, enter, and it's asking me the radius of the fill light. So I go and say two feet. Okay. Once this radius is specified, I go and draw my rectangle and then I delete and draw again it didn't work actually okay I go F fill it and I go let's say 10 feet it's still not working you know why because a rectangle is way smaller than 10 feet so how, how it's supposed to curl the edges so I go and draw a bigger rectangle and I go and check my dimensions here with going by going to the properties panel so it's 5 by 10 so it's pretty okay now so what I'm going to do I'm going to go delete this draw a rectangle go to fill it and I'm going to go on 2 feet fill it and now as you can see our rectangle corners around it this is the radius of the rectangle basically so to round the rectangle you can do that you can click and you can convert these two lines you can convert this back to arcs you can stretch any of the vertex you want as you can see you can make any shape you want with this so just go and just gonna show you a chamfer now I'm going rectangle and before you specify a chamfer you need to turn off fill light because the fill light command is sticky if I go press F fill light you see that 2 feet is already there it's still there so I need to make it 0 so I go and press 0 and now our fill light is 0 so now I can go and select chamfer by pressing C and let's go and do 2 feet for this as well And now we draw a chamfer. As you can see, the corners, corners of our rectangle are chamfered. So I draw another rectangle and go to chamfer, and I go two feet dimensions are right, and I go and click here. So as you can see, the corners we got the chamfered. It's kind of beveled it does the bowel down around your rectangle let's go and draw another rectangle here and go to chamfer two feet one, and then the distance of the rectangle I'm going to make it zero and now if you draw the rectangle now there is no chamfer here because a distance specified is the chamfered size so you got to make sure that you specify chamfer size as well so I go ahead and go chamfer and distance for rectangles is fine and I'm going to go 10 feet here and I go draw this chamfer again and now you see it's been chamfer you can turn this to same as with the normal rectangle you can turn this to R you can turn this to turn this back to line so this is basically a rectangle command so now we'll look at the polygon polygon is basically more than four corners if you want to specify more than four corners you can use polygon select that how many sides you want to specify let's say I go eight sides I press eight enter and I then start drawing my polygon as you can see now I've got eight sides eight corners of polygon that's called polygon you know that I can still change this to arc I can add vertex I can remove vertex on it so just play around with this and you will find your way you can make any kind of shapes any kind of diagrams with these things okay so one more thing everything once everything is done with the rectangle or polygons you gotta make sure that you bring your 
default setting back. So I go on zero and zero. So my chance rate is back to zero. There's another thing I'm gonna show you. In this video, I'm going to discuss polyline. As the name suggests, there are many segmented lines which behave as a single object. So before we start drawing a polyline, I'm going to go and select a line command and show you the difference between a line and a polyline. So I'll just go ahead and draw an object. Let's go and draw this object. And then I'm going to go and select polyline. So select and draw a polyline. And now what if I go and select the object here on the left hand side so as you can see if I select that part of the object it will select only one line because lines are, are separated segmented lines so what if I press escape and for deselect and I'm gonna go and select the polyline from this object so once I select that as you can see that the polyline is combined these lines are combined which is called polyline and it's a single object so I go and select my move command and I select that part of the line and a polyline and now I'm going to go press spacebar and I'm going to move these. As you can see, once I move around, it only moved a polyline and that single line. So the lines are separated, segmented lines. So let's go and start with polyline now. I'm going to go and draw another polyline. And I'm going to start from here. Let's go draw polyline. Okay, as you can see, we've got different options in polyline now on the command line. I can go and draw an arc within the polyline. If I go and click here, as you can see now, I'm drawing an arc. So if you want to go back to the line, you can always go back to the line by clicking to the line here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go close this object now by clicking close, or you can type C and spacebar. Okay, so let's have a look at this polyline and its different options. So if I go and select this polyline, I've got all these vertex around my polyline. So let's say I want to convert this arc to a line. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to this vertex in the middle and hover over my cursor to it. So I've got three options. I can stretch it, I can add a vertex, and I can convert this to a line. So if I go and convert this line, as you can see, basically convert it to a line. So if you want to convert a line to an arc, you can do that as well. You can go in the middle vertex here, hover over, and convert this to an arc, and you can draw an arc. You can even add a vector, sorry, a vertex to your line. Let's say I'll go hover over, add vertex. So it's going to ask me where I'm going to. So now it's asking me where I'm going to define a vertex. So let's go and select here. As you can see, this line is a different line now. But it's a simple object, but a different line now. So I can go and convert this line to an arc. As you can see, you can select any vertex, move them around, change your shape. So this is basically a polyline. Okay, so let's go ahead and define a width of a polyline. So if I start a line, and as you can see, I've got that width option in the line. What it does basically is it's going to keep your line a width. So if I go click here, and now it's going to ask me to specify the starting point. I'll go and say 10 feet. And the ending point will be 10 feet as well. So as you can see that now, we have width around our line. If I go and draw so many lines here, I can go and draw an arc as well. So if I go press A, spacebar, so it's starting an arc now. Okay, so within the line, let's say I want to go back to my line width zero. You can do that as well because you're gonna you're gonna have to define your width size always back to zero. Otherwise, AutoCAD will automatically keep drawing any line, a polyline to the width whatever you define so I'm going to go and select the width again starting point zero ending point zero so I've got my line back and I'm going to go close this here I'm just going to give you a quick tip what you can do by using width in polyline so I'm going to draw an arrow by using width in polyline okay so let's go here I'm going to draw a polyline here now so I'll start my point here and then draw a line and now I'm going to define my width so W spacebar the starting width would be let's say 15 feet and the ending would be 0 so if I go and zoom in as you can see now we got an arrow at the end of the line so that was a quick trick to use width in polyline so there are many different ways we will look at in 
in the main project when I started building our main project. So for now, I'm pretty much sure that I've covered everything about Polylon. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hi guys, this is Oasis again with another tutorial. In this video I will discuss points and donuts. Points are basically one pixel on your screen and donuts can have a larger size. So to turn on the point command, just type PO, enter spacebar, enter a spacebar and then you can start pointing. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to show you a multiple point command. If you go click on this arrow in a draw panel, you get this multiple points command there. So I can just click and put my points on your screen. So what does it mean, what we need, what we need um, these points for are basically these points can be used as a placeholders. So, so let's say you want to draw an arc so you can specify placeholder or a point on your screen and define the path up the arc. So I'll go and just go multi point. Just one point here, the other point I've got there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and select the arc command so I can just click on it and then click another one and then specify the second point. Okay, that's how you can make an arc. So one more thing I want to show you about points are basically let's say you want to draw a point but you can't see that on your screen and you can't select the point. So first of all, I will show you how you can select the point. Let's say I start a line command and then if I go near the point it will nod on this point. So how do I select that basically? Just hold shift and right click and here you can see the node command. So node basically will stick on the point. So if I turn this turn this on and I'm gonna go and select node, node, yeah. So let's say if you want to turn it on permanently what you can do is go to this object snapping, right click and you can turn off and now if I start a line command and I, you can see that I cannot select this point it's because the node command is not selected so I go shift right click and then select node and then as you can see I can select these points okay so now if I delete this line and as you can see it's very hard to see the points on your screen so to change how they look you can type this command ddp type ddp type press enter and now you can select any of the point style this one will totally disappear the points on your screen but these are the other options you got and you can specify the size of the point as well so it's now 5 percentage so I'll go and select this or maybe this one click OK as you can see now our points are way bigger now because it's 5 percent size so that's how you can change your points how they look so I'll go and select that one so our points will change there so now let's talk about donuts. So donuts are located right here in your draw panel. As the icon suggests, it allows you to create a ring on a field ring and a hollow ring. The donut commands create a ring with two arcs and they are part of the polyline. So if I go and select this and click, so that's where we got a donut. So as you can see, I can keep going. Okay, I'm gonna end this command and now I'm gonna specify inside diameter of a donut. So let's go, let's say I'll go maybe 5 feet and now specify outside diameter. I'll go 10 feet and then specify center point. I can click anywhere. So as you can see, if we go closer, that's what we got the donut here. It's outside diameter is 10 feet, inside diameter is 5 feet. So as we know, these donuts are made of polylines with the help of two arcs around it. So what if I select this donut and then go however my cursor to this. I can add a vertex here, I can convert this to line, I can even stretch. Let's say I will stretch a little bit and I will select this vertex and just stretch this one. I can even change this to a line. Let's say if I hover with my cursor here and I can convert this to a line. So basically points are a pixel. If you keep zooming into the points, they will stay the same size. But the donut has the R is made of polyline. If you zoom in, you can go in there and then zoom in indefinitely. So pretty much that's it for points and donuts today guys. I hope you like this video. Give a thumbs up and follow along with this course. I'm coming up with a lot more videos of Essential Training AutoCAD 2016. So go through with my course step by step to learn AutoCAD properly. 
So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Hi guys, this is Lewis again. Back with another tutorial of 2016 AutoCAD's Essential Training. This video is all about selection. Before you can modify objects, you need to select them. And it doesn't really matter how you want to modify them. You might want to move them or copy them, whatever you want to do. But all those commands start with a select object command. So to show you guys how does that work, I'm going to go and open my drawing, what I was working on. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my move command. And the very obvious way to select anything is just by clicking on them. It's a very common way to do it, but it's not very efficient. We've got better ways to do selection. Let's say if I want to select these stairs, I don't want to sit down and select all these lines. So we've got a better way to do it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is two types of windows we get. Let's say if I click and drag to the right, I've got a blue window. If I click and drag to the left, I get a green window. So what's the difference between them? To show you, I'm going to go to draw a line. Draw two lines. Okay, so now to select them, I'm going to go and select my move command. Let's say I'll select from the right to left. And even if I click here, it's going to select the whole line. And now, what if I'm going to go and select from left to right? See, it did not select. This is because the difference between green and blue window is the green window touches anything, it will be selected. But the blue window has to be as completely over the full object. The full object has to be in the blue window for selection. I have to go all the way and select it to select this line. So let's go and try this on the stairs. What if I want to select the stairs? What if I start from right to left? As you can see, everything what green window touches will be selected. But I want to select the only stair object. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to go and start from here to the right and I will click all about here. So as you can see, only the stray objects were completely in the blue window. That's why they're the one only selected. So now we know that what, how, what's the difference between green and blue window. So let's go and try this move command. If I select only this part the window of stairs will be selected but if I go and from move command if I start from here and I leave here so as you can see these lines were not in there so that's why they were not selected I'm gonna show you another way of selection if I go and select my move command as you can see there is nothing on the command line so I've got another command for you which is called fence selection so if you type F and enter it's gonna give us a line so I can draw a line, anything comes in this line will be selected. So this is a pretty good way to select these kind of objects. Let's say we got a lot of stairs, we got a lot of objects in a line. So all we're going to do is just make a fence selection and do it. It works with a lot of commands. Let's say I'm going to trim something, then I have to use fence. Let's say I want to trim these lines. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to TR to start a trim command, fence. All these lines were trimmed. So I go and type U spacebar to undo that one more time. So let's have a look at lasso selection. It works the same way as green window and a blue window. So if I go and click and drag, I can make a lasso. Anything this green window touches will be selected. So I go, you can drag this anywhere you want. So I click. See all these things are selected and I go from the left now so anything completely in the blue window will be selected so this is the, another way to do it this is called lasso selection there is another command which we can use to select the previous object we were working on so I'm gonna go and select move command and I'm gonna go select them and spacebar select my base point and move them oh I just realized that I want to do copy them not to move them 
So what I can do, I can select copy and now instead of selecting them I'm just going to go and type P spacebar and the previous object I was working on will be selected. It's very useful when your selection are very huge and you're selecting very small objects and you didn't want to go all the way and select all of them. So you can use this command by pressing P, it will be selected. So all the previous object will be selected. So I'll show you another example for selecting a previous command. I'm gonna go and select copy and go P, spacebar, select my base point and then copy them. So now if I go again and try to move whatever I copied and I go select, move command, press P, spacebar. As you can see, it did not actually select those objects because we were copying them but the, we were, the, the object we were working on was these two lines so you gotta keep in mind that whatever you were working on those will be selected let's say you want to select everything in the drawing so what you can do is move command and type all hit spacebar and everything in the drawing will be selected okay let's go ahead and look another way I'm gonna go and click on this line and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go right click and I've got these options here now. What if I want to select all these lines in the stair? So by right clicking up, I've got these options and I can go for this command, say select similar. If I click on this, it's going to select all the lines in the stair. So what this checks is, it checks whether the, all the same objects were on the same layer and their types as well okay so now we're gonna go and have a look at another method of selection we're almost done here but I want to make sure that I give you everything about selection what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type properties you can get your properties by typing properties or you can go and click on the view and click properties okay so now I'm gonna go and click properties so here we got three options. First, I'm going to talk about quick select. Okay, so now we'll get this dialog box and it's asking me if I'm going to apply this to the entire drawing. Let's do that. So I'll keep that entire drawing and now it's going to ask me what kind of object type I'm looking for. So I can go and select line, polyline, arc, anything you want here. So I'm going to go and say multiple. So if I want to select by color, I can select by color. If I want to select by layer, I can click here and select by layer. I want to select by line type, I can select by line type. So for now, I'm going to go and select by layer. And now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select objects. So let's say I'll go and select this whole drawing. Enter. And now, what I'm going to select is a stair, okay? So to do that, I will go and give a value. I will go and select my stairs inside and click OK. So now as you can see, whatever we're on inside stair layer will be selected. I want to select all the interior. Let's go ahead and do that again. So I go and click on the properties again. And I go and quick select. I will select entire drawing and I'm gonna select layer and then here I'm gonna go and select interior yep and now I'm gonna go and select the whole drawing enter select interior click OK so as you can see whatever were interior in my drawing it will be selected selection is what you do every time you work on AutoCAD so it's very important that you know how to select your objects and how to work with them. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Follow along with my course for the in-depth training of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. Hi guys, this is Alois again. Welcome to another tutorial of AutoCAD 2016 Essentials Training. In this video, I'll talk about how to move objects and copy objects. To do that, I'm going to go and open my portfolio drawing one. 
Okay, so now I'm going to talk about move command. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my home panel and I'm just going to go and zoom in. Let's say I want to move this so I can do by pressing M, spacebar, select an object. Now it's going to ask me specify object here. So I've selected that, hit spacebar again and now you need to specify base point. It could be anything, just just um, select any arbitrary point. So I go select here and let's say I'll pan around and then just go put it somewhere here. So the move command basically will ask you three things. Select an object, specify base point and just move around. That's how you can move objects. So the move command is pretty simple. All you gotta do is select object specify base point and just move around now let's look at the copy command and i'm going to explain the copy command array in this video as well so let's say i'm going to go and select copy and now it's asking me to select an object so i'll go and select this object hit spacebar now it's asking me to specify a base point i'll just go and select this node there and if I move around, let's say here, and then I click. So as you can see, I've got another copy of this TV. So as you can see, the um, copy command doesn't stop itself. So you can keep going, copying wherever you want to copy. So I'll just keep going. To exit the command, just hit spacebar, enter, or right click. Or you can type E, enter. Now let's look at the array option in the copy command. I'm going to delete some of my TV objects here, delete that one as well by pressing the delete button on the keyboard and just zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go and select copy command. You can select from the modify panel or you can just type PCO or copy, hit spacebar. And now let's have a look at the array commands. So select this TV now specify your base point you can turn on ortho by pressing f8 so now i'm going to go type a hit spacebar and now what it's asking me is enter the number of items to array so i go and say three so as you can see i've got two but the thing is that you got to add your main object as well so it could be very confusing for some people but it's just like if you want to drop let's say two objects you need to add the main object in that as well so let's say I want to draw three of them here so what you do CO hit spacebar enter click to specify base point and then you can select array and now I'm gonna go let's say six but it's gonna make five more copies of it as you can see here so you can click anywhere and then see the copy command is still going so you gotta hit spacebar enter or right click to end the command let's go and have a look at the feet point I'm gonna go and drop a line here let's say I draw a line for 50 feet Okay, um, it's a bit a little too much, so I'll go back and then change it to 20 feet. 20 feet. Hit enter. And now what I want to do is I want to make four copies of this in a column, in a row, sorry. Um, but I want to fit that in this 20 feet. So how can I do that? I'm going to go and select copy command. Select all these objects by crossing window. And now... To specify the base one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here. If this green uh, icon doesn't show up, what you have to do is hold shift, right click, and then select endpoint. So I'm going to go and select this endpoint of the line. And I'm going to make, let's say I want to make like three more copies, or four more copies. Let's say type array for A, type A, spacebar, say four copies, four, spacebar. And now as you can see that it's, if I drag my mouse down, it's making a lot of space. It's keeping a lot of space between that. 
but I want to fit that in 20 feet. So what I could do is click fit or type F, enter. And as you can see, it's keeping the same distance between these objects. So I just select this. As you can see, it actually fit those objects in 20 feet with the same distance between them. So I want to recommend you guys to practice about these commands, try to move around and but like at last you will get better with these. These are basically a simple command so not to worry about anything. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next video and I'm gonna explain to you guys rotate and scaling in the next video. So be sure to watch that video and follow along to my course and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on AutoCAD. 3D Studio Max and a lot more coming. Alright, see you in the next video. Hi guys, this is Arise again back with another tutorial of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. In this video, I'll discuss rotate and scale command. To get started, I'm gonna go and open one of my drawing, which is Portfolio Drawing 1. And now to show you the rotate command, I'm gonna copy my one of my objects from my drawing and bring it outside the drawing. I'll go and copy by typing CEO, hit spacebar, select an object, enter again, and specify a base point and let's take it outside. Okay, so let's have a look at the rotate command now. The rotate command is in right there in the modify panel, so I select the rotate command. And now it's gonna ask me to select an object. You can select multiple objects for now. I'm gonna show you with one of the objects. So I'll select this object, hit spacebar. Now it's gonna ask me to specify a base point. Just select in the middle somewhere, arbitrary base point. And as you can see now, if I move my cursor, what's happening? The object is rotating. So I can click anywhere and rotate it to any arbitrary rotation angle. Let's go ahead and undo this command. What I want to do, I want to rotate this object by specifying my angle. So you can do that. I go and select my rotate command again. Select the object, specify base point. And now while it's asking me to specify rotation angle, so I can type in 45. I want to rotate it by 45 degrees. So I can type 45, enter, and the object will be rotated to 45 degrees. Let's have a look one more command on the command line while you select your rotate command. So I'm just gonna draw a line here on my 90 degree angle. And now what I wanna do, I wanna rotate this, but I don't wanna move this object, I wanna make a copy of it. So what I can do is, I can select the base one here, and now as you can see I've got two options here. You can rotate your object by reference as well. And you can copy as well so i'll click copy for now and while that's i'm rotating to this angle what it's going to do is it's basically going to make a copy of it on that rotation and it's not going to do anything to my previous object now let's go and have a look at the scale command i'm going to delete these objects and i'm going to bring the same object outside by copying it okay so now let's Scale it. I'm going to scale it by 150 percentage. So how can I do that? I go and select my scale command which is right there in a the modify panel. Select. It's going to ask me to select an object. I'll select this object and I specify any arbitrary base point. Well, let's select in the middle somewhere. And now if I move my cursor as you can see it's scaling my object. If I go closer to my base point. I want to scale it by 150 percentage. So how can I do that? I can actually type in exact scaling factor. So if I want to scale it to 150, that would be 1.5. Anything over 1.5 is going to increase the size of scaling. But if you say 0.9, it's going to reduce the size by 1 10%. To so 1 to 1 percent is basically a hundred percent so if you want to scale it to 90 percent which is going to reduce the size that would be 0.9 so for now i'll scale it to 150 for that i'll try 1.5 enter enter 
and I decided to increase by 150% H. Now let's have a look at how can we scale our object by giving them a reference. For that I'm going to select this object by using a move command and I'm going to take this to this object because I'm giving a reference for this object. So let's go ahead and select my scale command. Select an object, whatever you want to scale to it. And now press spacebar and now for the base point select this endpoint. And now I've got two options here, copy and reference. I'm gonna go and select reference. For the reference, it's asking me scale the specify um, length. So the reference length would be start from here and then the second point would be there. So as you can see if I move the object is scaling. So I've got the reference there, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit um shift button, right click and select endpoint because I wanna snap my object to this endpoint. And I'm gonna click here and this object will be scaled to the reference of the other object there. Alright guys, this was pretty much everything about scale every day command. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Follow along with my course and with soon I'm gonna I'm gonna make a project by using these commands. Alright, thanks for watching, see you in the next This is Avers again, back with another tutorial of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. In this video, I'm going to discuss Array. So, I'll go and zoom into this object here, and I will go select my Array. As you can see, we've got three kinds of Array here. Rectangular Array, Path Array, and Polar Array. We will go through all of these step by step. So, I'll select Rectangular Array. It's going to ask me to select an object. I'll select this object, and I will enter. As you can see, the default array has been applied. So this panel is temporary, it's an array panel, so you can always go and change these array graphically, I'll show you in a moment, but here you got a panel, you can specify your columns, let's say I'll type 6, I've got 6 columns here, I've got row, I've got, say, let's say I've got 6 rows as well, so now I've got 6 rows as well, so here you can see that you can change your array by giving them values. So I'm going to go and type 1 for now, for my rows, and now I'll show you some graphical options here. So let's say I've got three kind of grips here. Let's say I will select this grip and move around. What it does is that it basically add more columns to the array. I will choose this grip, it basically changes the distance between columns. So this is same as these panels, but you can do it graphically, and I prefer doing graphically as well. Okay, so I'll go and change the distance now, and I'll show you where one very important option. So I'll go and add some more rows to it, let's say 3. You need to press tab to actually apply it, it takes a bit second to apply the changes to the array. And now we'll have a look at the associative option, and I always recommend to keep it on. What it does is basically it lets you edit your array in the future. So what if I go and close this array and I click one of the object. As you can see I'm back with array panel. I can still change columns, rows, distance. I can change total distance. I can edit the source as well. I can edit base point. I can reset the array. So associative is basically keeps you um, keep your array in one object and let's you edit it in the future. Okay, so now let's have a look at the path array. It's the same as rectangle array. What it does is basically it just applies the array around the path. So I'll go and select path array. My object is that. I'll select that. Enter. And now it's going to ask me to select the path. I've got this path here. It's mine. So I'll go and select that. Now I've got the same kind of option. I can specify row, columns. There's no columns, but I can specify row distance, I can specify total distance, I can specify levels here and I can keep the array associated, I can specify base one. Okay, so this is pretty much same, if I uncheck this option, it's not gonna align my objects to this part. So what I do, I'll go and close this array and show you one quick thing. Let's say 
We kept the associative option on, so now these objects are associated to this part. What if I change this part? I'll click on it, grab any of the vertex, and just change this. As you can see, our object changed as well. So that's basically associated. Okay, now let's look at the polar array. It's the same array. What it does is it does the array around the circle. So I'll go ahead and select this polar array. I'll select my object. It's going to ask me to specify the center point. That's my center point. You can always press shift, hold, and right click to get the center point option. Or you can keep your snapping option on. Object snapping option, sorry. And I go click, and as you can see, I've got my array down here. I can have more items to it. I press 10, and I'm gonna get 10 items around this circle. I can specify row, I can specify distance between them. I can actually specify the full column. Let's say this is 360, yeah? So what I do, I'll go and say 180. And you can see, I've got only 180 degree. I've got 10 items in 180 degrees. So this is pretty much about array topic. In the next topic, I'm going to talk about offsetting and mirroring. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow along with this course for the in-depth training of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Hi guys, this is Alice again, back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at offset command and a mirror command. I've got this object here, it's a room with a door. So I'll go and select the offset command. First, let's check our object is exploded. So we got offset command here in a modify panel. What I want to do is, I want to start the offset command by pressing O, enter. And as you can see that this command doesn't start by selecting an object. Instead, it's asking us to specify the distance. So what I want to do, I want to apply an offset of 9 inch from this line to the left hand side. So to show you what, first I'm going to delete one of the line. I'm going to delete this line, delete this as well. And then select an offset command, specify a distance, I go 9, enter. And now it's asking us to select an object. So I want to offset this line to 9 inch. So I can select, enter, and, and if, as you can see, if I take my cursor to the left, it makes the offset of 9 inch from that line to the left hand side. If I take it to the right, I'll, I'll get the offset on the right hand side. So it's all about which side you want to apply an offset. So I click. I've got another line here, offset by 9 inch. So I can keep going, this command still on. I can keep applying offset as much as I want. So let's undo now. What I wanna do now is I wanna apply an offset by defining a distance graphically. So what I have to do is, let's say I have a distance here and I don't know about it. So I can still apply offset with the same distance by selecting graphically on your drawing area. So I go and select an offset command and it's, as you can see the 9 inch is still there. It's because we previously applied 9 inch offset. So the AutoCAD remembers whatever the previous offset distance was. So you can always have to change. And now what I want to do, I want to select from here and perpendicular that. So it actually took the distance between this line to this line. And now I can apply offset. As you can see that was the same distance because the distance was here a 9 inch so I got a 9 inch offset. There's another thing you can do is I delete this line for now. You can always go and measure the distance and apply by typing it. So if I go and select and I want to see the distance between here. So as you see, as you see, we got nine inch distance here. So that was pretty much about offset command. Now let's have a look at the mirror command. So I've got a mirror command on a modify panel here. What it does basically, it reflects the object. 
So I want to make another room reflected to the left hand side. So to do that, what I have to do is I've got to make an offset of some, let's say, nine inch. There's another command called extend. I'll talk about it in later videos. I'll go and select that for now. I'll go and click this arrow called extend command. What it does basically, it extend one object to the next object. So now it's asking me to select an object. I'll select this object and now enter and it's asking me extend to here. So I can extend both sides. So now what I have to do, I have to mirror this object. Let's go and draw a random object. Let's say that's my object, right? I want to mirror it to the right side. What I have to do is I've select the mirror command, select an object, and now once I select it, press enter, and then it's asking me the first point of the mirror line. So let's say if I go and select here, and I can turn on my auto by typing F8. What auto does is basically it keeps your cursor to the 90 degrees angle. You go to the left, it keeps your angle to the zero degree, 90 on the top. If you go left, it goes to 180, so it's four angles in auto. So if we go straight up, as you can see that the object is not been mirrored on the right hand side. So it's basically, if I turn off my auto, it's basically what does, it's all about just selecting base point and selecting your second base point. So if I go on the top, I'll keep my polar on. So if I go on the top and I click, I've got a mirror object. So the next option it's asking me, do I want to erase the source object? So in this case, I don't want to erase that. So I'll click now. As you can see, I've got two objects now, one mirrored. So now let's go and make another room next to this one. So what I have to do is, I have to, let's say I'll delete this line and now I'll select my mirror command, select the whole object, enter and now it's asking me to select the first point. So now to do that, what I have to do is I will select this midline and I go up. As you can see, I've got the, I don't want to erase the source object, no. So if I go up, as you can see, I've got the object mirrored to the left. So the mirror command is all about selecting a point and your second point. So just play around with this. You will get better eventually by the time. So that was it about, fill, about mirror and offset command. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Follow along to my course and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching again. Hi guys, this is Ares again, back with another tutorial of AutoCAD 2016 Essential Training. In this in this video, we're gonna have a look at few commands of AutoCADs. We're gonna have a look at stretch, lengthen, trim, and extend. So first, let's have a look at the stretch command. I've got this drawing here, and what if I wanna move this part of the drawing all the way here? So I use stretch command by going to my modify panel, click. And the key thing here is basically you have to use stretch command by using a window selection. So I go ahead and select this object by using window selection and I hit spacebar. I give it an arbitrary base point right there and I just move my cursor. As you can see that our room is stretching. So I click here. Now this room has been stretched. Stretch command is pretty powerful in AutoCAD but with experience and with the time you will get to know how to use this com this command so just gonna show you quickly one more thing that it's all about selection the way you select the object and use stretch command you will gain the experience by the time so I'll go and select this stretch command again and now I want to select this part hit spacebar as you can see I've got these two objects selected on the right hand side these two lines are selected these doors are completely selected so I give it an arbitrary base point right there and I move my cursor as you can see I can move the doors and the middle wall in these two rooms so if I turn off my auto 
by pressing F8. I can even stretch wherever I want. As you can see, stretch command is pretty powerful. But I turn on my auto and I just stretch it a bit here. So that was it about stretch command. And now let's have a look at the lengthen command. So I'll draw a line to show you how a lengthen command works. So I draw a line about here. I measure the distance of it. So I've got distance about 25 feet 4 inches here. So the lengthen command is in the modify panel. If you click that arrow and you get the lengthen command here. And now it's asking me to select an object. So I'll select this object and it gave me a length of that as well. So I select it one more time and I hit spacebar and now specify the total length or an angle. You can specify the angle as well or you can give it a total length. So I want this total length to be start from here and go up to the mid. And now it's gonna ask me to select an object to change that. That was the length so I'll go and click here. I'll right click here. So each side I'm gonna click so it's gonna make this object to that length. Lengthen command is useful sometimes while working on your 2D drawings. Okay so that was it about lengthen command. I hope you understood. Use this command and you will gain experience and you will get familiar about these commands by the time. So now I'm going to show you a trim command which is my favorite command in AutoCAD. So because I use this trim command all the time while I work on a 2D drawing, it's the most useful command. I reckon trim, extend, fillet, rotate, move commands are the most useful commands. If you know this command you can work and make anything you want. Okay let's have a look at the trim command. I'll draw a line here. I'll draw another line. And I draw one more line about here. Okay, so I've got this object here, and what I want to do, I want to trim this part of the line. To do that, I'll go and select my trim command, and it's gonna ask me to select an object. So this is my object. Okay, hit spacebar, and now what I want to select, what I want to now, if I hover my cursor here, you see, this line is gonna get trimmed. If I go click here, this line is going to get trimmed by this intersection of these two lines. So I click here, I've got this line trimmed. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you about selection here. Let's say I've got this line here, I will just hold and stretch this vertex over about here. And I copy by typing CO, hit spacebar, I'll copy one, two, three line. Okay, so now. I want to select the subject, let's say I turn on my trim command and I, my subject is this line and I hit the spacebar, alright? And now if I click here because I selected my subject now, so even if I click here it's going to get trimmed all the way to there because this we got a few more intersections here as well, let's say we got one, two, three intersection. The trim command should be trimming just from here and then here and then here. But if you specify a subject, it's gonna get trimmed all the way to that subject. So if I click here or here, it's gonna it, it, it will be the same thing. Okay, so now one more thing I wanna show you is let's say I will draw I will extend these lines. I'll show you the extend command in a moment, alright? Okay, so I want to trim this part, right? This is called fence selection. If I go and select my trim command, and I will hit spacebar one more time because I don't want to select anything. And I will select this fence selection. You can turn it on by pressing F and spacebar, or you can just click here. And now, as you can see, I've got a line there. So anything it crosses an intersection, let's say I will start a line there, I'll start a line there, Start a line there and start a line there. It's space far. Everything is gone. Whatever that intersected that line, it will be gone. A trim command wouldn't work. Let's say you got this line here and you want to trim from here to here. That would not work because there is nothing to intersect this line. 
it will you can do that by using the lengthen command but if you want to trim anything it has to intersect to something okay so now we have a look at the extend command extend command is pretty much the same thing but it's just do opposite it will extend the subject an object to the specific area let's say I'll go and select extend command I want to extend this to here so I don't want to select any object right now so I click right click one more time and now I've got these options there and if I click here and I click one more time one more time that line has been extended so I go press view undo and now with the subject selection I go select my extend command and I want this line to be extended all the way here so for that I have to select this subject alright now I've been selected now if I enter one more time and now I click here it will be extended all the way it's gonna skip these two lines so you can use the fan selection for that as well let's say I got I'll just undo and I've got that 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 and I can use fan selection as well I go extend I want to extend this to here so I hit spacebar and I go fan selection so I go from here 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 so you got the extend selection there alright guys that was about um, it about these commands I hope you liked the tutorial and if, drop down any comment if there's any questions about it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hi guys this is the race again back with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about two commands. First one is the break and the second break at point. So the break command it actually break any object between two points. Break at point it breaks any object at the point so let's have a look at the first break command I'll click on that and that's gonna ask me to specify my object let's say I want to break this line if I click here and move my cursor as you can see it started breaking from there the problem with this method is it's not accurate you cannot specify the accuracy so I'm gonna go and undo this I'm gonna show you how you can break between two points with accuracy so start a command br spacebar select the object and now down here on the command line as you can see I've got option here first point so let's say I click over here and because of my object snapping is on so I can snap to this end point so I start from here and I can go to the mid okay to select the midpoint press shift hold right click and go midpoint and now you can see that you got the midpoint there and I click here so that's how you can break with accuracy let's undo this I'm going to draw two lines. There's two ways to get rid of these two middle lines. I can trim and I can use break at point. Well, there's a lot of ways to get the job done, but in this video I'm talking about break at point and break command, so let's do that way. I'll select this object and I'll stack my first point. It's because that line is intersecting to my main object, so I can press shift, right click, select intersection zoom in a little bit and I can just start from here to there and I could trim that I can show you how to trim this command easy but there's a lot of ways to get the job done the main point is you need to get the job done doesn't matter how you do it okay now let's have a look at the break at point command I'll go and select break at point and I'm gonna break this line it's gonna ask me select the object so I select this line and now it's gonna ask me specify first break point so my object snapping is on and I want to select the middle points so I go press shift right click midpoint and I can click here and now if I select my line as you can see that line has been broken into two pieces okay so now let's have a look at the break command again I'll go and select the break command and I want to break this line if I click about here and move my cursor as you can see it started breaking the line but there's a shortcut key if you don't want to give, leave a gap so let's say with break command I can even break at point as well so I'll type shift at symbol and then enter and now I'm gonna go and select my line as you can see that break command 
didn't leave any gap but it still broke my line into two pieces okay so now let's have a look at the join command what it does is it rejoins the object if let's say I broke this line between these two pieces right I'll go and select this line as you can see I've got two pieces I have to select them separately so go to the modify panel and there you go we got the join command there so I click here and now it's gonna ask me select a source object or multiple objects so I select this line I want to join this line to this line and I click enter and there you go if I select this line now it's been rejoined I can even rejoin these two lines I type join press spacebar and I select the first object that one the second one and I add spacebar as, as you can see that this line's been joined as well so to bring my drawing back where it was I'll go join this line as well okay so I'll erase this okay that was about it um, join and break commands so I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching be sure to subscribe for more videos like this thanks for watching guys cheers Hi guys, this is OS again. In this video, I'm going to talk about editing with grips, creating boundaries, and cleaning up our drawing. So let's get started. I'm going to go and open my drawing to... So let's talk about grips. If I go and select this line, I get three kinds of grips here. Every object has grips. Grips provide six different modified commands and an alternative interface to edit the object. If I select this middle grip and I move my cursor, I've got auto on and I'm going to turn it off by pressing F8. And now as you can see, I can move the object by selecting from the middle grip. So if I go and click here, I actually move the whole object. If I select the corner grip, let's say I select this grip and I move my cursor, as you can see it's more like stretch. So let's say it's more likely stretching an object. I go and select the stretch command, select my object, select from here, and still as you can see I can still stretch. But grips are more efficient. Let's say I'll go and select the corner grip. And I'm not going to click on it, I'm just going to hover over it. And I can two kind of command here. I can lengthen the line, I can stretch the line. So we just seen stretch. So the advantage with lengthen is you can't change the angles. You can shorten the line and you can increase the line. So if I go click here, it's going to shorten the line with the same angle. I'm going to show you one more thing that if I select this grip, and this time I'm going to click on it. And now on the command line, as you can see that I'm in the stretch command with the asterisk. So I can cycle through with different commands. If I go and press spacebar, and now as you can see the line is moving. And we got the move command here. If I press spacebar again, I'm in the rotate command now. As you can see, if my, I move my cursor, the object is rotating. A click, I press spacebar one more time. Now I'm in a scale command and I click right click or spacebar one more time. I go back to my stretch command. I've got a mirror command here as well. So if I go and press spacebar again, I'm back to stretch command. So that's how you can cycle through with a lot of commands by pressing spacebar while you selected the grip. We have a lengthen choice as well, but that one is already only available in a shortcut menu right there. And now select this grip. So I've got move command by pressing one time spacebar. Press spacebar again, I've got rotate command. And now let's have a look, can we apply these commands by selecting two objects at the same time? So I'm going to go and select these two objects and from this grip, I'm going to hold down the shift key, click here, and then click on the other grip, and let the shift key go, and now I click on this arrow, 
grip, sorry. And now, as you can see, I'm in a stretch command. I can stretch both objects at the same time. I press spacebar. Now I'm in a move command. Spacebar again. I can rotate these two objects. And pretty much that's it about grips. Let's have a look. How can we make boundaries? I'm gonna go and deselect these objects by pressing escape. And I've got a boundary command here. In the draw panel, you go to boundary. I'm gonna select that. And it's gonna ask me to pick a point. I have to click this icon. I click here. And it's gonna ask me to select and boundary. So what if I click here? First I wanna show you that I've got these objects are separated. What if I wanna join? Boundary command is very useful when you are creating a 3D model on, a, on the top of your 2D model. So you know, you, can you cannot extrude this separated objects so you have to combine them you could combine them by using join command but boundary command is pretty much same thing but it's very fast and it does all the work for you so I'm gonna go and select the boundary command I'm gonna pick this point and click here and press spacebar and what it did is basically I select this object now this object is combined so what if I select this group here and I press Spacebar one more time. Now I'm in a move command, so I take my object all the way up. So as you can see that what boundary command did is it did not basically join those objects. It actually created a new object between that boundary. So let's say if I make two lines here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this part. And I'm going to delete these two lines and now what if I choose the boundary command again and I pick a point right there so it's gave me a message a close boundary cannot be determined that means a boundary command only works when they have the covered boundary so if it's any object it's broken in the middle part and then you don't have the boundary it would not work so use the boundary command, you have to have a proper object for it. Okay, so now let's have a look a bit more features of boundary command. I'm going to go and select the boundary command again. In this dialog box, I've got a few options here. I can select pick point, what I just showed you before, what it does, it select the point and it's make the boundary around that point. So if there's any gap between the lines, it would not work. In a very big project, let's say you, you got a lot of drawings going on in your project and you don't want to make AutoCAD to work hard for you to find a boundary. So because when you select the boundary command, AutoCAD go through the whole drawing and search for the object and algorithm basically work and then make a boundary between your pick point. But what can I do? I can specify the area for AutoCAD to analyze by clicking this arrow and I'm going to go and select this area. So what I get out of it going to do is it's going to skip the rest of the drawing and just going to analyze this part of the drawing and make a boundary. And there's another option here says object type. You can actually create a polyline and a region as well. I'll talk about region in the next video, but let's um, polyline. Let's talk about polyline. So polyline is basically it's a joint line what can be used to extrude objects. So that's it for boundaries guys. Let's talk about cleaning up the drawing. I'm gonna go and move my polyline boundary back to the position by selecting move command. I'm gonna snap it. And now I'm just gonna show you one more thing. Let's say I'm gonna go and use my break command to break this between points done and now I've got two objects here just want to show you if I select this part I've got a separate line here I've got a separate line here and I've got a middle line on the top of um, these two lines so I've got basically three lines it's not a good drafting practice so 
there's an automatic command what basically it does it cleans up your project so I've got this one but as you know I had a pro um, I had a same object at the back of this polyline so I'm gonna explore this object as well by pressing X and select the object hit spacebar and I've got two same objects if I go and group this from here and move the object as you can see I've got a line at the back of this line so I move this back to the there so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get AutoCAD to clean up this object for me so what it's gonna do it's gonna clean up everything behind this object so anything the same object exists on the top of the same object it will be erased so let's have a look so there's a cleanup command if I go to my modify panel I've got a command called overkill it's in a modify panel so I'm gonna go click on this command and I'm gonna go and select this object and I'm gonna press spacebar so I've got this dialog box so it's asking me basically what kind of object I have to delete so I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore it says ignore object properties I'm gonna ignore layer and rest all I'm gonna go get them to clean so I press ok and now if I go and select this line so let's say I'll go and select the erase command and I select this object and now down here it's telling me one object found so that means the duplicates on this object were deleted so now our drawing is basically more streamlined talk about region in the next video subscribe to my channel and i'll talk to you in the next video hi guys this is always back with another tutorial of autocad 2016 essential training in this video i'm going to talk about performing boolean operations on region so let's get started i'm going to go and draw a circle size doesn't matter and then I will draw a rectangle next to it and let's draw a lips about that and then I'm gonna draw a pentagon as well draw a pentagon about that and now at these points these objects are defined along the perimeters so now let's go and convert these objects to regions. Go to your draw panel, select the region command, select these objects, and then press spacebar. And now on the command line, as you can see, four regions created. A region only being created on, a, on an object which has the boundary. So let's say I will draw a line about one, two, three points, and I don't close this line so it does not have a boundary. So what if I perform a region command on this line and so as you can see that it's telling me that zero region created. So the regions command can only be applied on an object which has the boundary. So let's go and delete this object. So now we can use boolean commands to manipulate this object because these are regions now. To perform a boolean operation what I'm going to do I'm going to move this circle to this a rectangle so now it's overlapping so there's a command called union you type union press spacebar and now select these two objects press spacebar so the result is the combined boundary of these two objects it wouldn't be possible before when we had a rectangle and just and a circle because these objects were not a region object so there's another command called intersect so what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this object a bit down and then I type intersect, enter and select these two objects, press spacebar. So the result is their common area, the area that they both share. So finally there's another boolean command called subtract. So to do that, I'm going to move this pentagon about here and type subtract from the keyboard press spacebar and now in the subtract boolean operation with subtract command the order you select the object is very important 
you need to select the object you wish to have remain first. So in this case, I would like to Pentagon to remain. So I select this Pentagon first, press spacebar, and I subtract this object to be subtracted from the Pentagon. And I press spacebar again, and the result is so the other object was subtracted from Pentagon. So Boolean operations allow you to manipulate the regions. It's quite interesting because you can use object as tools to come up with these complex shapes. Boolean operations are very useful in 3D modeling. So that's it for Boolean operations. In the next video I will cover fillet, chamfer and blend commands. So see you guys in the next video. Subscribe to the channel and follow my in-depth training of AutoCAD 2016 Essential. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I'm going to talk about three commands, fillet, chamfer, and blend. So let's start with the fillet command first. The fillet command is on the modify panel. If you click on the fillet command and hover over your cursor, the icons actually tells you what these commands do. So I hover over my cursor to fillet command. What it does is rounds and fillet the edge of the object. Let's see the chamfer command. It basically applies a beveled and edge of object. Blend command create a tangent or smooth spline between endpoints of two open curved objects. So let's select fillet command. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how you can apply a radius because fillet command can make an arc as well. So I'm going to go and select this radius and I can actually specify values by typing but I can even click on the screen and specify my radius. So I'm going to go and click two points. I'll click here and then the second point would be about here. And now, if I select this first line and I hover over my cursor to the second line, the preview window shows that what's going to happen. So what it's doing is basically, it's making an arc with that radius we just selected on the screen by giving it two points. So I select this and now we've got an arc. Okay, so now let's have a look at the fillet command one more time, but this time I'm going to delete the radius back to zero. So I click on the radius and I press 0, enter, and now our radius is 0. So now I select this line and hover over your cursor to the next line. So what it's going to do, it's basically going to trim away on the top of the object. So I click here and now fill the command has been applied and those two objects, you know the two lines were there, were trimmed away. Okay, so let's have a look one more time of fill the command and I'll tell you about selecting the object while using fillet command. So I just go and select on a fillet command. And now let's say if I select this line and I hover over my cursor to this line, what this command is going to do, it's going to trim away the bottom of two lines. And if I take my cursor over here, so it's going to trim away on the right side. So it's very important the way you select the object, that's how you're going to work. So always try to select the object first, what you want to keep. So I click here and these two lines are trimmed away. So that's it for fillet command. Let's have a look at the chamfer command now. So click on this arrow button and select chamfer command. And now chamfer command basically work with two distance. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply a distance. So I go and click on a distance on my command line. I click distance and now it's gonna ask me to specify first chamfer distance. If the chamfer distance is equally applied on a boat chamfered so what's going to happen it's going to create a straight beveled line so i'll go and maybe click here and then click about here that would be our distance and the second one would be the same if i space uh, if i press spacebar so you can apply the second distance as well but i'm going to go and show you with the equal distance so i go and select um, that distance by pressing spacebar and now i select this line and a second line so as you can see, the distance we applied before, what's going to do, it's going to apply a beveled chamfer. So I click here and that's done. Let's have a look at chamfer command one more time. Okay, so I go ahead and select the chamfer command. And this time, a distance is going to be a bit larger. Let's say I will apply a distance about that. So the distance is pretty large. So what if I space spacebar and click on the top of the line, not the bottom, because the bottom one will actually take the distance because 
it's not that large. So if I click on this line and I hover my cursor to the next one, you see the round circle come up. Basically, it means that it's impossible because distance is too large. So I go ahead and click on the distance one more time and I select the two small points about there in the uh, spacebar and hover your cursor. So see what's going to happen is it's going to apply the chamfer now. So the chamfer distance matters if it's larger than expected and if it's larger than what your object can take, it will work. If not, then you, make, you, make, you need to make sure that you apply a proper distance. You can apply an angle and a method as well. So let's say I want to chamfer this line. I click on this object and those other right side object will be trimmed away. Now let's have a look at the bevel command. So I click on the bevel curve. What it does is basically give you a spline between two objects. So you don't have to specify any values here. So you select first line and then second line. And I'm going to zoom in by scrolling up my mouse wheel and I select this line. As you can see, it's basically a spline with these vertex. You can actually edit them as well. So I go and hover my cursor and I can actually add vertex. I can refine vertex. I can remove vertex. I can even stretch. So I select stretch size. You can see if I move my cursor, I can stretch this. I can select this vertex and add vertex as well. So as you can see, the vertex has been added as well. I can even change this to a line. I go hover over this part and I can change it to a line. Hover over this one and then maybe add another vertex. So you can actually keep going. There you have it guys. Um, these three commands are very useful when you draw a 2D drawing. So get your hands on them. You will get better by the time. And thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is Awes back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I will discuss Divide and Amaya command. Divide and Amaya command, both of them are towards the point object. You can use this command to lay out objects. So I've got my drawing opened and let's say we want to add a stool to this kitchen island. And I've got a stool outside my drawing. What I want to do is I want to select this tool and move it to this drawing. So I'll use move command and select this tool, select your base point and then just move it to your drawing. So now I would like to have three stools on this line which are all equally spaced on this line. I can use divide command to help me determine how can we do that. So type div spacebar now it's asking me to select object to divide so i'm gonna go and select this line now it's asking me to enter the number of segments so i'm gonna go and type 4 press spacebar now the command is done as you can see pretty much nothing has happened but actually divide command has been created three point object these points are displayed at single pixels and they are hard to see. It will be hard to see if the color, a layer will be the same as the object. So what I want to do is I want to change the style of the points so we can look at them. So to look at the pixels, what I want to do, I want to type a little noun command which is DDTP spacebar. So I've got a dialog box here. I can select any shape to represent the points so I like that one so I'll select that one and press OK and now as you can see we got three points divided with the same space on this line so while I want to choose um, this line and I want to snap this stool to these pixel so I'll leave the style of the point the way it is so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select a copy command and then select this object and what I want to do, I want to select the midpoint of the stool here. So I will hold down shift key right click and choose midpoint. And I will select midpoint and then what I want to do. Now as you can see I've got no object snapping here. So the points commands accept a node object snapping. So what I want to do, I want to hold down shift key right click and select node. And now if you go next to the point you will see the 
object snapping now so I'll click here and then I'll click on it I'll click up oh, you gotta go and select the node command every time you want to copy it so I'll go and select again hold down shift key right click node and now you can note that there hold down shift key right click select node and then click on it so as you can see I've got three stools equally divided on this line and now I can go back and change the point style so I go ddp type command enter and then select this one single pixel style of the points press ok so these ones are basically there but they have disappeared for now because the point style is a single pixel style let's say I'll change the color of this line I'll change the color of this line by let's say red and now I will move these tools a little bit up as you go zoom in and then you can see the single pixel are shown on this on this line so the points are basically there but we can't see it because of the point style I'll zoom out for now just want to mention one thing here if you don't want to hold down shift key and then right click to select node while you are copying those tools on the line you can go and turn on object snapping and if you click on this arrow and then you can select which one will automatically work so I'll go and ch check this node and I'll highly recommend this perpendicular as well and then if I go and select my move command now and select this and go to that as you can see now I got the automatic object snapping is on now so that's how you can work with it let's talk about my command now but first what I want to do I want to get rid of these points so what I do I will start my selection from left to right by selecting window and I click and then I press delete or you can use erase command there and now I'm going to delete these stools as well so the menu command basically lets you set distance between the objects so what I want to do I want to select this tool and set a distance for that I'm going to go and select the menu command by typing MEA SURE spacebar and now it's going to ask me to select the object so what I want to do I want to select this line and now it's going to ask me the length of the segment so let's say I'll type 5 feet and I press spacebar and now what I'm going to do is select from crossing window left to right as you can see I've got this point there which is which has 5 feet distance between from the starting point and this node so what if I select this whole line now I've got 5 feet distance here 5 feet distance in the middle and rest it whatever is left it will be there so the measure command can create this type of measurement but the problem with this you're gonna have a leftover whatever is there it's gonna be there so this is the remainder here that distance after that point so in this case when we're trying to get three stool on this line divide command is way better than the measure command but there will be some circumstances where you will be better off using measure command rather than divide command when you need to make sure there's a set distance between objects so there you have it these are two commands there you have it there are two commands which are really useful to lay out objects alright guys thanks for watching um, make sure to subscribe to my channel hi guys this is Awais back with another tutorial in this video I'll talk about grid and snap so I'm gonna go and open the drawing let's start a new drawing so grid and snap allow you to draw object constrained in space so go down on the status bar and toggle on these two features grid and a snap to control the spacing right click on a snap and then choose snap setting this opens up the drafting setting dialog box and we are on the snap and a grid tab so here we've got a shortcut keys for snap on is F9 but the grid is F7 so you can turn them off and on by pressing F9 or F7 for grid 
So as you can see that snap X spacing is half a millimeter and Y spacing is half a millimeter as well. And grid is the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go change grid spacing to one millimeter. Press one, press tab, changes to one as well. And the major line, I'm going to change it to 10. So if you were using inches in feet, it would be best to use 12 inches every major line. So on the right, as you can see, these lines are the major lines. And inside them, there are the minor lines. And down here, I've got the grid behavior. I'm going to leave adaptive grid check so that the grid adaptivity is limited when you zoom out. So down here, I've got another option, allow subdivision below the grid spacing. That means basically, it won't subdivide smaller than one centimeter. So on the left, you're going to make sure that we have grid snap and rectangular snap selected. And then I'm going to go and press OK. So now on the drawing area, what we're seeing is we're seeing a major line every 10 centimeters. And inside, we got a box with minor lines, which should be one centimeter. So as you can see, I've got 10 boxes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that means one centimeter is basically a box. So now if I zoom in, as you can see that grid does not subdivide below a centimeter. So if I zoom out, at certain points, we cannot see individual centimeter boxes anymore. We're just looking at every 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna zoom back in so I could see the smaller one centimeter box. This gives us good visual indication, just like graph paper does, of the regular organization of spaces. So let's go and select the line command and I come down to my drawing area. If I move my cursor, as you can see, it's jumping on every centimeter that's because of snapping is on so it's basically snapping to every centimeter so now as you can see I can snap to the corner intersection and I can snap to the middle of this one centimeter as well so now if I draw a line and start from here and I just select the second point about here and down here so now basically now what's the dimension of this line without measuring it, without knowing it because every major line is a 10 centimeter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish drawing a rectangle and I press C to close and it will make a rectangle. So it can be nice to use snap in situation where your geometry happens to confirm to such a scheme and I would say generally that's rare. Unless you're making mechanical parts that just happen to come in half centimeter increments. I will explain some more flexible approach to grid and snapping in future videos. So let's go and draw another line here. I'll start from here. And if I move my cursor, you can see that I can't draw it to any place other than this special grid. Well, let's say I want to draw a line to some other arbitrary point. So what I have to do is I have to come to the status bar and turn off this snapping drawing grid. To click on it and it will turn off. You can even press, I'll go and check the shortcut command again. It's F9. So if you press F9, it will turn on snap. And then if you press again, F9, it will turn off snap. So now the cursor moves smoothly and I can click anywhere I want. So alternately what we can do we can actually hide the grid and you can use snap. Even the grids are not showing, but basically snapping is on. So if I go and draw a line, though I don't see grid anymore, but snapping is on, so it's still operative. And I can, you can see that if I draw a line, the cursor is not smooth, so I cannot draw wherever I want. So it's gonna snap to every minor box, which is one centimeter. So there you have it, grid and snap two aids that assist when you are creating objects that happen to conform to a special grid. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video, and subscribe to my channel. Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I'm going to discuss isometric drawings. So, isometric drawings are two-dimensional illusions that represent three-dimensional objects, but they're not. 3D models. This is perfect for AutoCAD LT which doesn't support 3D modeling. 
So you can actually represent a 3D object in isometric. So to enable isometric drafting, you need to turn on the toggle on status bar called isoplane. So go to the customization menu on the right corner, click on it, and then here we got isometric drafting. I'll make sure it's checked. And now we got an icon on the status bar called isometric drafting. It's got three options here, isoplane left, isoplane top, and isoplane right. So what I'm going to do, I want to turn on my ISO plane left and just turn on my ortho as well by pressing F8. Now let's write the line. I'll start from here and then as you can see it's drawing on a 90 degrees and 180 degrees because our US, UCS is on the same on the wall for now. To turn on the isometric drawing, what do you have to do? You gotta click on it and make sure it turns to red and green. So if you look at the cursor now, it's in two colors red and green so red color represent x-axis and green color represents y-axis so i'll go and click this arrow and make sure that i'm on iso plane left and now let's draw a line so i start a line from here and i go on left it's drawing on 150 degrees and 90 degrees so i draw a line about here and i go on top and then i come back and i go down a little bit and then i go about here and i just move all the way down so now to clean up this drawing I'm gonna go and select my trim command press spacebar to select all and get of these get rid of these ones so now let's select top ISO plane to make the top part of the drawing so I'm going to select the line again and then start from here so if you wanna if you, the intersection doesn't show up, what do you have to do hold down shift key right click and select this endpoint go to the right about here go back and just draw a line here so what I'm going to do is I want to clean up this drawing because this line is not actually what I wanted so I'll go and select my erase command by pressing E spacebar select this line press spacebar again to get rid of this and I'll start a line from this endpoint now so hold down shift key right click click on the endpoint select this endpoint and go all the way there and now let's draw a few more lines on the same ISO plane, which is a top. I'll draw a line about here, like one more, draw another line. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line on the right side. So I select this intersection and I go, see, as you can see, I cannot go down because my isometric is on the top. So I'll go and change this to either right or left. Let's draw it right first. A line, a random line basically. And then I select this intersection point and go all the way down. And now I use the trim command to clean up my drawing. And I click this part and I get rid of that line. So now I can copy this left part of the drawing. Let's say I'll select my copy command and I select these objects. And now for the base one, I select this intersection, take this to the next intersection. I want to select one line, so I click on it and delete. Now let's clean up a drawing. Select the trim command by pressing TR and spacebar and get rid of these corners. You need to press spacebar one more time to select the whole object. So get rid of these lines. Alright, so there we have it. An isometric drawing that represents a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface. If you want to go back to the coordinate system which was before, so you need to make sure that you toggle off this icon isometric drafting all right guys thanks for watching this was about isometric drafting the isometric drafting is, is very useful if you want to represent a 3d model on a 2d surface and thanks for watching guys that's it for now i'll talk to you guys in the next video subscribe to my channel for more videos on autocad essential training and be sure to check out my full playlist on this course Hi guys, this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I will discuss coordinate system. We have two primary coordinate systems, Cartesian and Polar coordinate system. AutoCAD also support cylindrical and spherical coordinate system, but they are only used in 3D modeling. We use Cartesian and Polar coordinate system all the time. Even if you draw a simple line, then you are going to use the Cartesian and Polar coordinate system. So now just turn on your dynamic import on your status bar, click on this icon and then your 
dynamic input is on now and I'm going to go and start a line and now we got two values here first value represent x-axis and second value represent y-axis so if I go closer to my 0 comma 0 so you see that values are basically decreasing so if I take my cursor on the right which is x-axis so the values are basically increasing if I move my cursor up you know the y-axis values are increasing so this is basically a Cartesian coordinate system while your dynamic input is on you can see those numbers next to your cursor you can even type the values as well even if your dynamic input is not on you can still type the values and it will take you to the specific point so I'll specify absolute coordinate by giving values to my dynamic input so I'll type 15 press tab to go to the y-axis value press 15 and press enter and now this is basically our absolute 15 by 15 coordinate system normally we don't care where the line starts from but I'm just highlighting this to show you guys that you can actually input absolute coordinates by giving them values Cartesian app coordinates are not very useful when you're drawing a line but they're more useful when you're drawing a rectangle I will show you in shortly that how you can draw a rectangle by using Cartesian system but for now I will talk about the polar coordinate system so now I'll start a line and I select any arbitrary base point so I'll select my first one right here and now the coordinate systems are automatically change to polar coordinate system because it's much more useful at this stage when you're drawing lines we generally don't care where the lines start from instead we're more concerned with how long the lines are so the polar coordinate system measures the distance from your initial point which is that so if I move my cursor about here so you can see that the value is really small if I move my cursor further away as you can see the values are increasing so the other portion of the coordinate system is the angle if I move my cursor as you can see that it's actually telling me the angle of the line as well so now I'm going to give them values and I will type let's say 20 and I press tab to go to my angle value so I'll type let's say 45 so I want this line to be long at 20 unit and angle should be 45 so I press enter and now the line has been drawn at 20 and 45 degrees is the angle so the basically polar coordinate system is all about distance between your starting point and to the next point and you can specify angle of the line as well so now let's talk about Cartesian coordinate system when you're drawing a rectangle so I'll start a rectangle command and I'll give a starting point some arbitrary point so I'll, let's say I'll start my line about here and now our starting point is that and then if I move a cursor and now it's you see the values are changing on your dynamic input so let's say I want to draw a rectangle of 20 by 40 so the first value represent x-axis and the second value represent y-axis so basically the point would be not from 0 to 0 it actually start from the first point you just given to this command so let's say I will type 30 and I press tab for the y values so 30 is about from here to here as you can see that if I type 50 and now the rectangle is basically drawn so all I have to do is press enter and then as you can see that we got the old rectangle so if I measure this by using a measure command and I start from this point to this one which is 50 and I will go and start this command again and start from this point to this point which is 30 so the Cartesian coordinate system is more useful when you're drawing a lot when you're drawing rectangles all right guys thanks for watching um, this is about coordinate system and I'll see you guys in the next video hi guys this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD essential training in this video I will discuss ortho tracking and polar tracking so down here on the status bar we got ortho and we got polar so I'm going to turn off the polar first and I'll talk about ortho let's start at ortho so basically ortho is about it stricts your line to the right angle which is 90 degrees so I start a line here and I give it some arbitrary starting point I start from here 
And now, as you can see, even if I move my cursor away from the line, it restricts the line to draw on a zero degree angle. If I close, get closer to 90 degrees, the auto will change that to the 90 degree. So you got four kind of angles here, basically. Zero, 90, 180, and 270. So let's say I don't have to give an angle. You can type a value. Let's say if I type a value of 100 and I press enter, the line will be drawn on zero degree angle with 100 units. So if I want to draw a 90 degree, I can push my cursor up and I draw 100, enter, the line will be draw and let's say 100, 100. So that's how you want to keep the right angle all the time, let's say 0, 90, 180 and 270. So you can always use auto and this will keep your line straight. So now let's have a look at the polar tracking. I'm going to go and delete this and I start my polar. So to start a polar, you need to, it will automatically turn off auto. So the polar tracking is basically, it restricts the cursor to specified angle. So we got a few different options here. I can restrict my cursor to 90, 180, 270, 360, or I can use different kind of angles, 45, 90, 130. So let's try 90 to 360 first, and I'll draw a line. And I start my line command, and I give it some arbitrary point. So I can draw anywhere I want. It's not like ortho, which strict your line to this to the right angle. So you can draw here. But if I go closer to my zero degree angle, you can see the green dotted line, which is going to strict the angle to zero. So let's say I draw 100 and I press enter, the line will be drawn. So I can draw anywhere I want, but I will go closer to 90 degrees and I type the value 100 and this will draw a line on 90 degrees. You can always override it by giving a values. Let's say I want to draw a line, but I want to draw on 45 degrees. So I can type 100, press tab, and now you can give 45 degrees to your angle value and press enter. The line will be drawn at 45 degrees. So polar is basically very helpful when drawing 2D drawing. Um, and you can actually override this. So this is basically very useful. Now let's try a different kind of polar setting. I'll try 45, 90, and 135. So let's say I start my line command by pressing L and enter. And now I start my line about here. And now if I go closer to my zero degrees angle, it's giving me green dotted line. If I go closer to my 45 degree angle, it's giving me dotted green dotted line. It's giving me 90 degrees, 135, 180. So this is how basically you can keep your angle straight. If you're, because all the time, pretty much all the time when you're drawing 2D, you're gonna keep your line straight. So let's try a different one. Let's say 1836. So now, see that? It's strictly 36, 72, 108. So I can even define my own angle. I go back to 90 and I can click at this arrow button and say trapping, tracking setting. And I click on it, I get this dialog box here which keeps me polar tracking and I can add additional angles. So if I check this and I type 45, press enter, and I can type 135, press enter, I can type 265, let's say, and I press OK. And now I start my line command. So now I can get the 45. As you can see that here, we don't have 45 degree angle but it's still giving me 45 degree angle because I actually define my own angle. So I can go more 265 as well. If I go 265, let's say. I move my cursor, there you go. That's your 265 degree angle basically, which you defined. So that's it for polar tracking guys. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials on AutoCAD Essential Training. Hi guys, this is Oris back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I'll discuss object snapping. I've got a few objects here. I've drawn a line, circle, and rectangle. Object snap allow you to precisely connect objects using the geometry itself as a guide. So on the status bar, we got this option, object snapping. I click on it, and I click on this arrow button. So here we got a few options here. The first thing, we use endpoint. 
This is an automatically continuous object snapping option. So if this icon is blue, that means object snapping will be continuously on. So let's say I will check endpoint, midpoint, um, intersection. And now three, three of these options are automatically continuously on. So let's say I will draw a line, right? I start at the line. As if I go near to the endpoint, you see the cursor snaps to the endpoint of the line. If I go to the mid, it snaps to the middle of the line. So it's automatic snapping is basically continuously on. So it depends on what options you checked on. Let's say if I turn on this nearest option as well. So now I've draw a line and I can draw a nearest option as well. So object snapping is basically this green icon. If it shows, doesn't matter how close you are, it's going to snap to that point. So I start at endpoint, but our microsoft is not exactly on the endpoint of the line. And it's still snap. If I click here now, it's going to snap from this endpoint. So now we look at each options here. So what I want to do, I want to turn off everything and I will use these options manually whenever I need them. So I draw a line and now hold down shift key and right click so you get the same options here but these options for the time being these are not the continuous object snapping option so if I select endpoint and start a line here and now if I want to select this endpoint as you can see that it does not snap to this endpoint so I have to do is hold down shift key right click select endpoint and it only works once so you gotta keep doing that okay so now we took about endpoint and now let's have a look at the middle point so I can right click by holding shift key select midpoint midpoint basically snaps to the middle of the object select the line command again hold down shift key intersection to show you intersection I have to draw another line let's say I draw a line about here and I start another line command and right click which holding down shift key and then select intersection. So now if I go closer to this, now it's gonna snap to the intersection of these two lines and I can start drawing lines. Okay, so now let's have a look at extension. What is the extension means? So let's draw two lines. I'll draw two lines about here. All right. So now basically if I use fill a command and then fill it this, and I'll use my point command by typing PO and make a point about here. Hold down shift key, right click, go on endpoint and about here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trim off some portion of these lines. Okay, and I delete these lines as well. For now, I'll hide this, this uh, point. So I'll make a layer, make a new layer say whatever name you want to do color change it to blue and I want to change this point to this and I want to hide this by clicking this build button it will turn off that layer so now I want to draw a line but I want to intersect that intersection point I want to select that as well so I start a line command shift key and right click and then select extension so I will start from here and now I have to go to this point, hold down shift key, right click, go extension again and that extension stay there and now you can see that green dotted line coming down and then I will go to this extension and I come up so the point is going to be there as you can see that it snapped to the extension. We use the filter command to show you that what does it mean basically so I can click here so that endpoint is basically on the top of the point because that extended that point. All right, so let's have a look at another thing now. I start a line command and hold on shift key. Let's have a look at the center. So to center, you have to use a circle. So start a line command. I'm gonna start a line command from the center of this circle. What I have to do is hold down shift key, right click, select center, now as you can see I've got the center okay so there's another thing I want to show you is line command right click I'll start a line about here but I want to draw a quadrant or hold down shift key right click 
I've got a quadrant here. As you can see that if I snap to it, that's the quadrant of the circle. So quadrant is basically four points, south, north, east, west, on the 90 degree angle. So I can make a quadrant line to this circle. Okay, so what's next? We'll look at the tangent now. Let's have a look at the perpendicular first. I draw a line here. And I'm going to draw a line to perpendicular to this object. So start a line command by pressing fade. Hold down shift key, right click, select endpoint, start endpoint. And now as you can see, I cannot snap to it. I can hold down shift key, right click, select perpendicular. Now I can snap to the perpendicular literally to this object. So now you can keep this on and keep this object snapping on all the time. Object snapping on, press OK. This will turn it on. I'll check this, check this. So basically what I recommend you to keep on automatic object snapping on endpoint, midpoint and center because these are the most useful object snapping you will be using. You can keep it on perpendicular as well and intersection. These are the main basic object snapping used in AutoCAD 2D drawings. I've shown you nearest, nearest, keep it off because it's going to distract you by snapping to the main points. So that's it for about object snapping. You can, you can actually go and click on object snapping setting and you can choose these options as well. But it used to be in the older way in the AutoCAD that you had to select by going drafting setting. You have to select all these object snapping mode. But now AutoCAD 2016, we get these options outside on a status bar by clicking this arrow button. So I'll show you a node as well. One thing about node. Let's say I'll draw a point. I've drawn a point before and I'll turn back on by clicking this bold button. And now I've got a point here. If I go DDP type command, I get this dialog bar. So I change my point style to this. As you can see, I've got a point here. So if I go start a line command and I want to start from this line, what I have to do is because node is off, I can check this on here. It will automatically start from the center of this point. So I can start it. But in other ways, if you don't want to keep this on all the time, you can turn it off and you can use it at the time where you need it by holding down shift key, right click, select node, and you can start it from there. There's a few more options here. Let's say insertion. It's all about text. When you type a text, 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 sorry. Um, when you type a text in your drawings, that's where you need to use insertion. I've shown you quadrant. I'll show you tangent as well. So turn this on and now I'll draw a line to, I'm gonna draw a line about here, but I'm gonna select, see, that actually snapped to this circle, to end final circle. So object snapping, one more thing I want to mention here that object snapping is about this green arrow. Once this green arrow shows, doesn't matter where your cursor is, if you click on it, it's going to snap to that tangent point or to any object snapping. Alright guys, thanks for watching. This is all about object snapping. While I start my practical project, I will use this object snapping and explain about this more in a later practical project, which is a host project. And for now, be blessed. And for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training. In this video, I will discuss user coordinate system. By default, AutoCAD uses word coordinate system. In short, it's WCS. It's possible to create your own coordinate system, which is called UCS, User Coordinate System which can have different origin point. In this video, I will show you how you can create a user coordinate system and draw according to that UCS. So I opened one of my drawing and what I'm gonna do, I'll turn on UCS icon by typing UCS icon command on keyboard. And now you can select on, press enter. And now on the left, you can see that we got X and Y axis, which is UCS. So I've got this X and Y axis and I've got this box here. I can click on it and I can move this wherever I want. If I click on this, 
and I can even rotate this UCS. I can move this UCS to any different location and I can rotate it wherever I want. So let's say I want to rotate this by the angle of this polygon so I can move this UCS by clicking on this button and snap it to the end point and I select this X, X axis and I can just snap it to this end point. Now my UCS is basically according to this line. So let's say I'll draw a line now and I turn on my ortho. And as you know that ortho only works with 90 degree angle. So I start a line by here and now basically if you draw a line as you can see that it's basically not zero degree angle but it's actually taking this as zero degree angle so now if I move my cursor so basically the line is drawing according to this UCS to go back to the word UCS what you have to do type UCS enter and here we got a few options space named object preview word view there you get the word option click on this and your UCS is going back to word okay so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna go and explode this box this polygon sorry and now I want to move my UCS to this object so I type UCS press enter and now I've got a few options here face means you can use in 3d so if you want to put your UCS according to the face you can do that you can use named let's say if you got a layer of stair let's say any layer you want to select you can do that as well but it's going to ask you to select an object but for now, I'm going to show you one thing that ob about objects. So let's say I want to move my UCS according to this object. So I'm going to click on this object and now I'll select this line. If, as you can see that when I'm hovering over my cursor to each line, my UCS is changing. Okay, so I'll click here. And now, while my UCS is according to this line, what I have to do is I can select my stretch command. I can select these objects. And I can even stretch. So if I turn on my ortho, as you can see that it's stretching according to x axis. So my angle will not be changed. So these are the benefits of using UCS. Okay, now let's have a look. I'll go by, I go bring my UCS back to Word by typing UCS, click on a word, and I will select my UCS and I click on this box and I move my UCS about I turn off my auto by pressing F8 and I'm gonna snap my UCS about here. Now I'll show you that how you can rotate your UCS or any axis according to the angle. So I type UCS and now I've got a few options here. I've got X, Y and Z and Z axis. So let's draw X. I can type X and press spacebar from keyboard and now let's say I want to move X axis to 90 degrees or 180 degrees so as you can see that our y axis has gone back to down because x axis rotated to 90 degrees we got a z axis but we can't see that in a 2d drawing so i'll type ucs again and what i want to do i'm going to rotate my ucs according to z axis i can click here i can type that and now if i move my cursor as you can see our x and y axis are rotating so i can actually give the value to z axis let's say 45 degrees so now our axis is moved to 45 degrees. So you can actually type the values on keyboard. And now let's have a look at another thing about UCS. I type UCS command. And what I will do is take my UCS back to Word. And then I type UCS again. Press enter. And now I'll move object. Sorry, I will change my UCS and take it to the object. Let's say I will put my UCS according to this line. And now, let's say I'm um, giving you an example that if you got a paper on the table with this drawing and you want to rotate the paper, you're not basically moving a drawing or rotating a drawing, but you just move your, rotate your paper to just have a look at the different sides. You can do that. There's a command called plane, P-L-A-N, type plane. And now it's going to ask you that if it wants to use current UCS or UCS you want to define or you want to see that word. So if I select current UCS and now as you can see that my drawing has been rotated. It actually did not rotate but it's AutoGet is just showing me that 
drawing according to this UCS. To go back to your use word UCS, you can type UCS and select a word here, and it will take you back to the word command. And now go plain and select word to go back to your normal UCS. Alright guys, that's it for UCS. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is OS back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training Series. In this video, I'm going to talk about hatch command. I've got my drawing open and first what I want to do, I want to press Z, spacebar, E for extent, zoom. And now on the draw panel, we got this hatch command. I click on it and it will take me to this hatch creation panel. First, I've got these options pick point. I will talk about it in a moment. Select which asks you to select the boundary object. Next we got hatch patterns. If I click this arrow button, I can scroll down and have a look at my all the hatch available. Next I've got some hatch properties. Now because I'm selected the solid hatch so it will give me some solid hatch property. I can change the hash transparency as well and I can change angle. First I need to apply that hatch. So a few things I want to talk about is hatch command only work with the boundary and hatch command only detects whatever is on your screen. So let's say if I zoom in to this part and I track my pick point to my wall. As you can see that I cannot see any preview because the AutoCAD does not have a boundary for a hatch command. So if I zoom out and now I'll take my cursor to inside the wall and now it works. It's all about that whatever is on your screen is calculated by AutoCAD. So you gotta make sure you have the whole object on your screen. <clears throat> so I'll go and click my point to the wall to apply the hatch command. Click on this point and select all my walls wherever I want to add hatch. Okay. So I think I've covered all the walls here and then all I have to do is spacebar to complete the hatch command. <clears throat> and now let's make another hatch for this back area. And this time I want to make it look like bricks. So I click this arrow button and I search for brick looking hatch I think that's fine I click here and now I've got to select a big point so I'll click a pick one here and now if I exit my command and select my hatch again which will take me to the creation panel again so now here I've got a few options I've got pattern I've got solid gradient I can change it to whatever I want but I want to keep that pattern Okay, so now color would be by layer because I'm working on a wall layer which color is white. So I can even change that color, but I want to keep that as a wall, as a layer. <coughs> and next I've got hash transparency. Okay, if I go and select my hatch, it will take me to hatch editor. And here I've got the angle. I can change the hatch angle. As you can see, if I move my cursor and drag the hatch angle changes. I can even apply the transparency but you won't see the transparency on your screen it will only affect on the printing so when you print your drawing that will actually affect on there. I can even give the value let's say it's too thick for me right so I'm gonna give a value of let's say 6 enter and now I've got the bigger bricks I'll go back and give it to it looks more realistic. To match the properties, let's say I will go and select that hatch property to let's say I'll select this wall hatch and I'm gonna match properties with that one. So as you can see that my wall is being changed to brick with the same properties on it. Last thing I want to show you is set origin. If you click this arrow button and then here you got bottom left, bottom right, 
these are all origins you can set and you can define your own origin bias click on this command select sorry set a region let's add some more hatch at the front so I go and select break so I go and select this break hatch and I'll go and pick a point by clicking on this pick point and then I click here done now I want to add some grass to it so what I can do is I select this line a bit and then just move it a little bit up so I know that's the grass I get rid of this line there because I need only one boundary for the hatch command to work so I'm going to select my hatch command again and as you can see on the preview I'm getting the same thing but here this time I'm going to go and select this corn and I click and then spacebar select that hatch again and give a value of 6 so this is basically showing as a grass that's what I use it for grass it's up to you guys what do you want to use okay so okay now let's have a look how can we make hatch by selecting an object I'm gonna go and draw a rectangle next to my drawing I'm gonna select the rectangle command make a rectangle and I'll draw a line on the top here and draw a line on the top here and what I want to do on explode this rectangle first to make it separate object and I'll select and I close this line I'll delete this line delete that line and what I want to do I want to drag this down and I want to drag this line down but I don't want to close that so let's say you've got an object which is not closed and you don't have a boundary you can still make a hatch by select the hatch command instead of picking points you can click on this select a boundary object and now what I want to do I want to select this object by window and now as you can see that hatch command work even though we have a gap here I can still make hatch command to work for me by selecting an object so this is about making hatch without having a boundary alright guys this is was it about hatch command thanks for watching the video check out my full course on AutoCAD essential training I'll drop a description uh, I'll drop a link in the description below and I'll see you guys in Hi guys, this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this video, I will make a gradient hatch and I'll show you how you can re-edit your hatch. Let's draw a rectangle here and I will click on this arrow button and I've got this gradient command. I click on this and it's going to ask me to select an object. I can even pick a point. Let's say I'll click on here. Now it's going to ask me to pick a point. So I'll pick this point and I press enter now I've got this gradient in the rectangle and now as you can see I've got a few options here it's same as a hatch but it's just a gradient if you click this out of you can even change this gradient to any of these hatches available here but I'll keep that for now and I've got this color options here I can mix two three whatever I want to color this hatch I can change that all right and then I've got this transparency it's about the same options you get with a normal hatch so I'm going to go and close this hatch editor. That's how you can basically make a hatch gradient hatch. So I close this editor and I get rid of this. So let's say I want to edit this hatch, but I want this gradient hatch to edit the way it's rectangle edit. So I'll go and click this and then I will go and recreate. I've got this command recreate and then I'm going to it's going to ask me if I want to make a region or a polygon. Region is mostly used in 3D modeling, but I will click on Polygon for now. And now I've got this option here. It's asking me reassociate hatch with the new boundary. 
And if you want to reassociate this hat, this hat with a boundary, you type Y, press spacebar, and now your hat is being associated with a new boundary. So let's say I will select this boundary and I will move this vertex about here. As you can see that even when I move my boundary, my hatch will move. So that's how you can re-edit your hatch. So I've got this boundary outside the hatch command. You gotta, and then if I hold and cursor on this vertex, I can convert this to R. See? So this is pretty good. Um, Alright guys, that's it for hatch command now. I will talk about writing text in your drawing in the next chapter. Uh, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is OS back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training Series. In this video, we'll talk about making of a text object. First, let's go and create a text style. So type style on the keyboard, ST is enough to complete the command, press spacebar and now you get this dialog box here. So I've got this few text style already been made, but what I want to do, I want to make a new text style. So I'll go click on new and I give a name to mine, press ok. And then with the mine, uh, the reason why the simplex text is selected because my current set text style was set to style 1 so it inherited from the style 1 so I've got this list here for text styles if you got some different programs installed in your computer you might see different kind of text styles here so I'll keep that as simplex and one thing I want to show you is you got this A symbol next to your text style that means that that text belongs to AutoCAD so the simplex text is good enough for anything you make in AutoCAD I will highly recommend that the height should leave as zero because if you give a value to the height of your text then you are locked in and you cannot change that to any text object while you're working. So with the width factor I'll keep that as 0.8. I just want to make my text narrower. I can even apply the ang angle as well. Let's say if I type 45 as you can see my text Preview is showing me that the angle has been applied, but I keep that as zero. I can apply upside down effect to my text. I can apply backward text. I can even apply vertical text. So for now, I'll leave that as it, and then I apply, and I click on this mine text style, and I click on set current, and I close. Now you have successfully created a new text style. So now we will create a single line text object. Okay, so click on this flyout menu in your annotation panel and select a single line text object. Zoom in to this bedroom and now it's going to ask me to specify the first point. So I click here and now it's asking me to specify height. By default it's set to 1 feet but I want to change it to 9 inches so I'll give a value 9, press enter. And now it's asking me the text angle. So I keep that at zero by pressing spacebar. And now I just start typing text. Bedroom. Enter. Okay. Double enter for exiting the command. And now if I select object, so as you can see that these two are separate text object. Now I realize that I want to change the height of these two text objects. That's very easy and simple. Just select these two objects and type PR for properties. Press spacebar. In the properties panel, as you can see now, we got two text objects selected. I give you an overview of these properties for the text. Here you can change your color. By default, it's set to by layer. I can even change the layer. I can give it line type and down here in the text I can change the style to it. let's say in the style text style dialog box we had few text style I can change that to whichever I want but I want to keep that to mine I can justify the it to middle and I can change the height as well I can give a rotation angle 
I can even change my width factor. As you can see that by default it's 0 0.8. It's because our text style has this width factor. So I'll change the height to 1 feet. And as you can see that our text object has been set to 1 feet of height. I'm going to move my text object by selecting move command. Give a base wand and I'm going to move it to middle. The best way to write a text object is by copying the existing one. So I'll select my copy command, select these two objects, give a base point and then I'll copy that to my next bedroom. Alright, so let's say I want to change this to bedroom 2. So what I can do, I can select this and double click on it and just type 2. That's it. That's what you have to do. And I can move it to the front of the bedroom. Alright guys, let's have a look at the multi-line text now. I go and click to my multi-line text command. The shortcut command from keyboard is mText. I click on it. Now, I'm going to specify my first corner point. And now, what I have to do is I have to move my cursor down to specify a rectangle where my text is going to be. So I'll click about here. And now I've got this rectangle, a box here. In the multi-line text, you got a few options on your panel in the text editor. So you got your styles. You can change the styles right there. You can match the layer. Let's say I've got a text here on some other style. I want to match it to a specific style so I can use this command. I can specify my text here, text font style here. I can specify a color. And let's say I type living area. And now if I just hold and drag from here and make my rectangle bigger. So let's say I want to I want to keep that text in the center. So there's an option called justification. Click on it, and you get middle, center, and say click here, and your text would be in the middle. Here I've got left right it's all about if you know microsoft word then you are familiar with these options so i keep that in the middle i've got line spacing here i've got bullets and numbering here i can even make columns i have option here to check my spelling and i can even add a dictionary let's say you're typing in other language but using in english alphabet so you can specify your own words you can find and replace any word from this rectangle you can turn on and off the ruler. So now what I want to do, I want to press enter and I click outside the box to finish the command. And now I go and select my multi-line text. I've got three kinds of vertex here. So with this vertex, I can just move my rectangle along with text. With this, I can increase my rectangle size and decrease it from left to right with this vector from top to bottom so let's add some more text to it you double click on the text and it will get you back to your editing text editor sorry and I'll type some random text here you see as you can see that and I click outside so I've got this text here so I've got a few more um, things here if I drag this vertex down as you can see that that text on the right will come down to it because my box wasn't big enough to accumulate this all text into one area that's why it was happening so now I got this text here I can make even bigger rectangle so this is about multi-line text hi guys thanks for watching this video subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on AutoCAD and if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this video, we will see how to measure distance and areas. So I opened one of my drawing here and I'm going to go and click on this flyout menu and I've got a few commands here. I've got distance command, I've got radius command, I've got angle command, area and volume. Distance command measure the distance between two points along a polyline. Radius measure the radius of a circle or an arc. Angle may use the angle, area may use the area, volume may use the volume. So I'm going to start measuring distance first. I click on the distance command and let's say I will 
made of this line. So I select one endpoint from here to this endpoint, and now the command act to stop for a moment. As you can see here, it's 20 feet on our x axis. This command basically wouldn't write anything as a dimension command do, but this is just for your reference that to measure a distance. So I'm going to go and press spacebar and select this line now. I click this point and this end point. And now because a line on an angle, that's why I've got a few dimensions here. I've got the distance of a line, which is 5 feet 6, 3 by 4. I've got vertical distance here, 3 feet 11 and a half inch. I've got horizontal distance here, 3 feet 11 inch, 1 by 4. And I've got an angle here. The angle varies. It depends on your UCS. If my UCS is not on a wall, the angle I would get would be a different angle. Alright, so the next part, we're going to have a look at the radius command. Alright, so I click enter. And for the radius command, I need to draw a circle. I draw just a reference circle here. And I go and select the radius command. Now it's going to ask me to select an arc or a circle. I will just click on this and I've got the radius there. 1 feet, 9 inch and half. So I can even click angle. But as you can see that circle doesn't have angle. So I have to specify the second point. Let's say I've got two lines here. I've got that line and I've got this line. And I don't know the angle. So I'll go and select the angle command. I'll click this object and a second object here. As you can see now, I've got an angle of 151 degrees. I can even make a distance here. I can switch between commands. So once I click the second click, I've got, I get this option. I can even make angle, area, and volume within the same command. I've got these options on the command line as well. I can select these commands by clicking or pressing the blue alphabet and press spacebar and this will work. So let's say we will measure some more objects here. I'll draw an arc. Let's say measure this arc, right? So I'll select this angle and I click on this. I've got the arrow. I've got the angle here 88 degrees. So let's have a look at the this area command now. I'll draw a rectangle here and I don't know the dimension of this. So I'll go and click on this flat menu click on area command and now specify the corner points of an object. I can even select an object and I can specify the points as well. So, But this time I'm going to click on the object and I will select this rectangle. And I click on this area and now our area is 22520.8 square inches. So I've got that area as well. Let's have a look at by selecting points. So I'll select this point here and the next point would be that point. That point, that and this point. All right, so now I'll click and now I've got the same area. So you gotta select four points to make an area. So I've got 2252 0.8 square inches. You can use the old command by typing distance, di just type di, so that's a dist command, and click on it, and that's my a distance from this point to this point. So this command basically tells you the measurement on your command line. All right, let's have a look at different way to find out the measurement of an object. Let's say I want to find out a measurement of this line. So what I do, I select this line and type PR for properties, right click, and here in a geometry you can see that on the X axis where is our object, Y axis, Z axis. And now let's say we got a length of 15 feet, 3 by 4, I've got an angle as well, 270 degrees. So that's another way to find out. You can go to properties for any object on this drawing or wherever the object is there. You might some objects will give you a distance or measurement of object will give you a give you very um, brief information what your object is, what the angles are. So it's good way to find out the measurement or distance or type of your object while going to the properties. So there's another command called QP. That's a quick property command. Just quick information about your object. I've got a color, it's by layer. I've got 
layer information I can change the layer from here I can change the line tab and I've got a length here as well so just play around with QP command which is quick properties and the main properties which will be a lot more information about the object some objects will give you an area as well what if I go and select my rectangle here I've got to press escape to deselect and select my rectangle and I type PR for properties and let's see if we get the area as well as you can see I've got an area here as well so I click on it so I've got this information which say it's closed let's say if I explode this rectangle and then I select and type PR now the information is less it's got different kind of information here I've got four lines selected because it's not a closed object anymore it's these are the separate lines so that's why I've got different kind of information here all right so if you ever need to calculate anything you don't have to pull out your pocket calculator AutoCAD got his own calculator built into program so if I go and click this quick calc and I've got a calculator here I've got this quick calc here as well in the utility panel so let's say I want to do basic calculation I can do that as well within this calculator and I can do some advanced calculation as well let's say I want to add 9 feet by 8 dash 1 by 2 inches plus 2 feet 6 1 by 4 inches and I press this equal button and I get the answer here so my answer is 12 feet 2 and 2 inches 3 by 4 so just be aware that the last hole is going to be round value and this calculator can calculate distance angle and intersection so just play around with this calculator I've got this scientific calculation here as well if you click on this plus sign you get this sign you get these up um, some function of the calculator. So that's it for Miami distance and areas. In the next video we'll talk about dimensioning objects. So peace out for now. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hi guys this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this video I'll show you how you can make dimension objects. So the first thing what I want to do, I want to go to my home panel. In an annotation panel, you've got the dimension command here and you've got the linear dimension command. If you go and click this arrow button, you've got a few commands here, linear, aligned, angular. We'll go through step by step each of these commands. So I want to start dimensioning, but first thing what I want to do, I want to go to my annotate panel where I get this complete dimension panel so the first thing let's change our dimension style click on this arrow button and you get this dialog box here i've got two dimensions already there but i want to create a new one so i'll click a new and i give this name my d style click continue or press enter now i've got this dialog box in the preview window i will see what our changes i make in this dialog box so Let's say I want to change the color of the dimensions. I can give a color a red. So these lines changed to red. So I want to keep them by length. I can even define line type, line weight, and I can even hide dim line one. If, let's see if we hide dim line two. So that line's been hided. Down here I've got the extension lines. These are the extension lines. So I can give a color. I can change line type. I can even hide them so i'll change that by layer so this is extend beyond dim lines if i increase the value as you can see that i've got i'm getting the lines extending beyond the dim lines these are the dim lines so the lines are extending if i want to keep that to zero i'll give a value to zero and offset from origin so that means basically if i increase the value you see these lines are getting offset from the point you pick for your dimension so I'll keep that to zero as well and I'll just make this about nine inches that looks a bit better okay so now let's go to your symbol and arrow 
So in arrowheads, let's say we got these arrowheads there, right? I can change the design of them, like I got architectural lines, but they're not showing basically. So what I have to do is I have to keep a value a little bit, increase the value here, and go to your symbol and arrow, so I can change the arrow size basically. So as you can see that now lines are increasing. So I can define the first arrowhead and the second arrowhead. I will change this to dot. I like that dot one. I will increase the value. And now as you can see that there are the dots on every arrowhead. So there are a few options here, but I don't want to talk about it in this video. I'll talk about this in a later video. So let's go to your text. Text is the second most important tab you need to change. So the text height, make sure it's 9 inches or it depends what kind of drawing you're working on. If you are working on mechanical drawing, the text height would be very smaller. But on architectural drawing, I keep that as 9 inch, which looks way better when you print your drawing. So I've got these color options, I've got the text style option here. I can fill color to it, but I'll go back and give it value to none. I can align with dimension line. Let's say if I go and click this radio button on horizontal, so you see that doesn't matter what angle your dimensions are, it, it will show the text will show as horizontal value. So but I want to keep that aligned with dimension. And now let's go to your fit. I'll leave it for the next video and let's go to primary units. Here you need to make sure that your unit format is on architectural and precision should be same on your units. Remember when you set up your drawing, you you gave a value to your precision. So that should be same. I think mine was one by eight. So I keep that one by eight. And now I click okay. So we're almost done. So I'll click on this my G style and click set current and I close this. All right guys, our dimension style has been set. As you can see that I've got this my D style here. So I can start making dimension objects now. So I'll go and select this command, dimension command. And now before I select anything, I just want to show you a few options here. You can press down arrow to get the menu and you can click here as well on your command line. So I got angular, baseline, continuous. So there's few there's a lot of options here. So let's start making some dimensions. I'll click on this point first and then I will make my second point about there. As you can see I've got the dimension there. So I click and I've got the dimension there. Let's try a circle. What if I want to select a radius of this line? I can go to this arrow button and I can select the radius. But I don't have to do that in AutoCAD 16 because AutoCAD 16 has got a really advanced dimension command. So I'll just click on this dimension command and now if I hover over my cursor to the circle as you can see, it automatically detects that that's a circle and it starts giving me a radius. I've got a diameter option here as well, down on the command line, and I can change that to diameter. So I'll click here and then I can move wherever I want to for the second click, and then there you go, I've got my radius there. Let's try this arc with dimension command. So I'll hover my cursor and I've got this arc there. You click once and then you choose where you want to keep that dimension and second click would end that command. So as you can see, even though I finish my dimension, the command is still running. So let's go back up there and my command is still on. What I want to do, I want to show you this continuous option. If I click here, it's asking me to specify extension line origin. So I'll select that one and I click the second point about here third point here. So as you can see that when I click the dimension starts from the previous dimension finished. So with that option I can keep dimensioning as much as I want. Okay so one more thing let's dimension this room okay. I'll show you some text options. So I'll hover my cursor to this line object. So I hover my cursor, it automatically detects that line and give me the dimension. If I click here and I have to move wherever I want to keep my dimension, and now our options on the command line changed. So now I've got the option on the command line 
M text 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 angle I can undo as well. So let's say I want to type a text instead of this 23 dimension, I want to type something else. So I can type T, press spacebar, and now it's going to ask me to type dimension text. So let's say I'll say bedroom 20 feet, 20 feet, and I press enter. And now instead of giving me the proper dimension, I will write my dimension text to this text, whatever I write. So I click here, so you, you guys know the text option as well now. Okay, so let's make a few more dimension here. And then we will edit them. All right, I've got a few more, few more dimension here. Let's do this angled line. I'll hover on my cursor to this angled line. And now I've got the dimension. Now, it's very important that where you keep your cursor, if you keep your cursor on that same angle where the line is, let's say the line is on 45 degrees, right? So I keep my cursor to 45 degrees so I get the proper distance. But if I move my cursor to X axis, I get a different distance because AutoCAD is not calculating from line point one to point two. It's actually calculating from that point to that point on X axis. The same with the Y axis. If I move my cursor on the Y axis upwards, so my dimension changed as well. All right, so we're pretty much done. And now I will show you how you can edit those dimensions. So I'll end the command. Now, let's say I'll select this dimension here. I'll select this dimension, and now I've got two options here. I've got the four kind of vertex. So if I want to move my dimension, I can click on this vertex and just move. So I can move the text wherever I want. All right, so now let's say I'll move this vertex. So as you can see, while I'm moving to my minus x axis i've got different dimensions so my dimension are basically decreasing i'll leave that back to 20 feet i'll click on this dimension and then it's the same thing as in the middle one i can move the text so let's have a look at the radius uh, i'll click this radius button i've got a few options here i can move my radius along my object and if i want to move text click on this and then i can it can move my text as well. Double click to my text and I've got the text options here. So here I've got two text dimension text selected. What I don't want to do, I want to just select this one. So double click on this one and I've got this text dialog box. So I can even now change my text. I can write whatever I want. You know, it changed that to multi line text. So it's very handy. So you can change any text you want later once you have done your dimension. That's not a problem at all. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Central Training Series. In this video, I'll show you how you can hide your objects and isolate them. So down here on the status bar, I've got this command. If you click on this icon, you get two commands, hide objects, isolate objects. So let's have a look at isolate object first. So what it does is basically, let's say your drawing is pretty messy and you want to work on a specific object. So you want to hide rest of the drawing except that object. Let's say I want to work on this, all right? So I want to hide rest of the drawing until I finish working on this object. So I'll go and select this by selecting green selection window. And I just press spacebar and the rest of the drawing is hidden now. So I can keep working on this drawing as long as I want and then I can bring back that drawing. So type on isolate, press spacebar and then the drawing will come back. Now let's have a look at the hide object command I go and select hide object and let's say I want to hide this I select that press spacebar and then the object will be hidden to bring back your object you can type unhide press spacebar and then the object will come back so 
that's it for this video and be sure to check out my whole course on AutoCAD Essential Training. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is Always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this video, I will talk about editing object properties. So if you go to your home menu, you got this property panel here. So I'll go and discuss each three of these options. So I've got this match property here, I've got this object color option, I've got line weight option, I've got line type option. So let's zoom in to my that area of drawing. And now let's say I want to change the color of these three lines which would represent a window. So I can do that by selecting this and go and select any color. Let's say you click on the color and then the color will be applied to this window. I can even change the line weight to it. Let's say I want to make this line thicker so I can go and select any of the thicker line. Let's say I'll select this 0.60. You can't see that here now because our line weight is off. So if you're not showing that option here on your taskbar, what do you have to do? You go click on this customization and then make sure this line weight is on. So I'll go and check this and then once I check this and I zoom in, so I'll go select this lines and I give another 70 mm weight to it and now as you can see that our lines are thicker. So for now I'll select and make them by a layer. Okay, so let's say I want to show this line to a dotted line, a different kind of line. So I can select these three lines and let's say I select these two lines. And I've got three kind of lines here by block, by layer, so they and I've got a continuous line. I can load more lines by clicking this other button and click on this load button I've got a full library of the line so let's say I'll select this hidden line I've got to find out where is it this hidden line I click OK and I click OK again and now if I go to my line type properties I've got this hidden line there so I'll select these two lines and I click on hidden so now a line has been changed to hidden line. If I zoom in, you can see that I've got the hidden line there. You can even change the scale of the line type. So select these two objects, type PR, press spacebar. And now in the properties, you see that we got two lines selected. I can even change the color. I can change the layer and I can change the line type as well. So I can go continues or whatever I want. So here we got option line type scale. Let's say I give a value of 0.6 and now our line's gone more thicker. So select these two lines type PR, press spacebar and give a value to three. Or maybe give a value to five. So you see that you give a value five and now you can see that exactly dashed lines. Uh, you can call it hidden line. So now I'll show you a match property command. Let's say I'll select this command and now it's going to ask me to select the source object. So this is going to be my source. And now I can select the destination object and I select this command and then that line will change exactly the same where the other where your source object was. So I can keep selecting any line I want to and that will change to the that will change um, that will match the property to the source object so I click I press enter to end the command and now let's have a look a few more things here I'll go and undo this first by clicking this button or you can type U and press enter all right so if you click on this property arrow button, you get this another option here, transparency. You can even apply transparency to your lines as well. And you can specify by block, by typing a transparency value or by layer. 
All right, so just let's turn off this line weight and I'll show you one more thing here. All right, guys, um, that's it for editing object properties. Alright guys, that's it for editing properties. So I'll there's one thing I want to mention here that you make sure that you keep these three options by layer and instead of changing that line type or line weight or color here, you should do that in a layer menu. So keep those options for the layers. In the next video I'll talk about layers, how to make them, how to manage them and what are the commands you can use in the layer panel. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and peace out. Hi guys, this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. In this video, I'll show you how you can create layers and modify them. So just go to your home menu. Here we got the layer panel. So I've got a few options here. I'll go through step by step each of them. So first of all, what we want to do, we want to create layers. Why we want to create layers to differentiate between objects. Let's say I've got different kinds of objects in this drawing. I've got walls, I've got windows, door, I've got interior, and I've got bathroom stuff here. So it's a good practice that you make layers from the start of your drawing and keep working on them because later on when your project go bigger and bigger it's very hard to change any object to a specific layer so what I wanna do now is I wanna create some layers so how you can do that you click on this layer properties panel and here I've got three layers over there you can see that what is our current layer and you can see that here as well Let's go through about these four options here. With this button, I can create a new layer and I can press Alt N anytime on your drawing. I can create a VP frozen layer, I can delete layer, and I can make that layer current. So let's create some layers. So how many of how many kinds of objects I've got in this drawing? I've got walls. I've got windows, I've got interior, I've got bathroom stuff, and I've got text. So in this video, I'll just make three layers for wall, windows, and door. Okay, so click on this button, and now I can give a name A-Wall. It's good practice to give a name start by A, because it will represent architectural drawing. Create a new layer, A-Door create a new layer a dash window okay so now I've got three options here I've got on freeze lock so if you want to turn off your layer or turn it back on you can do that here you can freeze your layer you can lock your layer you can even give a color to your layer it's the best practice to give your colors because that's how you can recognize that what is that object and what's that object on the layer so I'll start giving some colors to my three of these layers. I will give this layers to color red for the wall. I'll change door color to blue. Or click OK. I'll change this color to yellow. My layers are ready now. So before I get to my drawing and start applying those layers, I just want to want mention one thing. Let's say you got these things on the top of your layer. You got status, you got all the descriptions of your line type, color, whatever it is. So if you right click, you got a few options here. Unfreeze column, optimize column. So if I go optimize all column. So now as you can see, you can't read the name. You can't see that it's, if it's saying on, frozen, or line way. So if you're AutoCAD showing that, that way, so you can do that by right clicking and maximize all column. So let's go and apply some layers now. So my current layer is zero now. So whatever I draw, let's say I draw a line here, whatever I draw, it will be on layer zero. 
so if I delete and go and change my layer to wall and now is on the property smeller you can see that the it's by layer color is by layer by layer line weight line type is by layer so if I draw a line now it's automatically drawing on wall layer because our current layer is wall layer so whatever you draw would be drawn on your current layer so one more thing I'll go in here and I'll draw a line here now and I draw another line but I will change this color to yellow and now if I draw my line the color would be yellow it's very confusing so it's very good practice that you leave all these three by layer because it gets so confusing so I'll change that to by layer okay so in the drop down layer menu we got this option I can turn off turn on any layer I can select the layer to make it current let's say if I selected this door and I go and select the lower the door will be changed to that layer but our wall will come back to the previous wall so you make sure you are not selecting anything and then go and change that layer so that will be your current layer so let's go and try these options here it's got you got the same option turn on turn off layers you can isolate layers you can freeze layer let's show you what isolate means so let's say you've got this zero a door drawing here and you want to isolate that because that's too messy around it and you want to only work on this object so you can click on this command isolate and then select the door and press spacebar and now the rest of the drawing has been isolated so no matter what you do try to delete or make any edit it would not work but that's drawing has been isolated so to de-isolate you can unisolate all alright guys that's it for now subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on AutoCAD and I'll talk to you guys in the next video Hi guys, this is Awais back with another tutorial of AutoCAD Essential Training Series. In this video, I will explain some accessing specialized layer tools. So go to your layer panel, click on this arrow button, you got this, these options here. I'm going to explain these one by one and we'll look at these commands as well on the layer panel. The way these icons organized are in pair above and below. So for example, in this pair we have off and turn all layers on. The next one we got isolate and unisolate. So let's say if I click on this off command and now I will select one of these dimension. So as you can see that all the dimensions are hidden now. So the command is still on. If I click on one of the door so all the doors disappeared as well this is very useful in a complex program you don't often know the name of the layer so you can just turn off the layer by selecting this command so all this command is doing is basically go up in a flight menu and you can see that our door layer is off dimension layer is off so to bring back those objects all you gotta do is turn on all layers so click on this command everything will come back you can freeze any layer by clicking on this icon and just keep going or you can just turn them back on so tar all layer so it will come back on we got a command called isolate and unisolate that works a bit differently so let's say you've got a very big drawing and you're gonna work on some particular objects uh, but there's a lot of mess around that object layer so to do that I'll click on this isolate command and let's say I just want to isolate the windows alright so I'll click on the window and I press spacebar and now all the other objects has been isolated so all I got is the window command even when I try to delete this wall it wouldn't work because those objects are being isolated so only objects you can work on now is a windows layer 
So whatever is on the Windows layer, you can work on them. Rest all has been isolated. You can do that here as well. There's a command called isolate object. So if you select this command and let's say you select the window, press enter. And now this is about isolating an object, not a layer. So that command works for the layer. That command works for the object. So I'll go and click and click on end object isolation. This will bring back all my drawings. So I click on unisolate and this will bring back all my drawing. So I'll zoom extent. We got, we got a command here, make current. Let's say you're on a 2D window drawing and you got like hundreds of layers and you don't know what this layer is called for this object. Let's say a door and you don't know what's the layer for this. So you can just click on make current, select that door and now your current layer will change to whatever the layer was on the object. So now it says 2D door. So that's very useful command when you have a lot of layers and you don't know which layer is what. So next we're going to look at the match layer command. Let's say I draw a line about here, which is on door. And what I want to do, I want to make dimension on this layer. So I can click on this and then now it's going to ask me to select an object. So I'll select this line and press spacebar and now it's going to ask me destination layer. I can even type the name but I don't know the name so I'll just click on this dimension layer and as you can see that this line is on dimension layer now. Once I select this on the top you can see that it changed to dimension. We got some additional commands in this flyout menu. The layer state in the next video. But let's have a look at these commands. So the layer previous command is basically undo for a layer. If I click on this it's going to just revert back to the state what I did just before with the layers all right so what I do I'll just go and click undo to bring my back okay so now I'm on 2d door I click this layer panel and I've got this change to current layer so let's say I've got this line here I want to change it to wall so what I can do I can make my current layer 2d wall and now I select this command and I select that object, that, that, and that. So I'll press spacebar and now all these objects, whatever I selected, will be on 2D wall layer. So I undo now. Okay, so the next command we got is a copy object to a new layer. Let's say I select this command, I'm gonna go and select this line, press spacebar, and now it's gonna ask me to select object destination so I'm gonna go and click name and I'll select this 2d wall click OK so now the line the line is on um, is been copied to the new layer as you can see that I can make a new copy of that line on a new net layer whatever I selected by name so next next command we're gonna look at is a layer walk so it's very interesting command let's say I toggle this on and now I zoom out before Let's zoom out, extend first and go to your layer, click on layer walk. And now I've got all the layers selected. This is very interesting command because it lets you walk through layer by layer. And let's say I'll just select zero layer. And as you can see, there is nothing on a zero layer. 2D door, I've got all the doors there. 2D wall, I've got all the walls there. So let's say now whatever is on 2d wall i can see that and i know that these two stairs these two objects are not doesn't belong to 2d wall so you can check that by using this layer walk command so i just go through as you can see that this line is not a dimension so i click close and i delete that i will change this to whatever it's supposed to be so i delete that now and let's have a look at the next command. So we've got this merge command. What it does, it merge selected layers into a targeted layer, removing the previous layer from a drawing. So let's say I want to merge, I'll change this to the layer 2D door, and I want to merge these two objects to 3D wall, 2D wall. So I'll go and select this 
command and it's asking me to select object on the layer to merge so I'll select this and that and then I'll press spacebar and now I'll select a targeted layer I can even give a name or I can select that targeted layer I want to select my name so I will select to the wall press OK and you it's asking me do you wish to continue yes and now whatever the layers are selected that will be changed to that targeted layer so I press U spacebar to undo let's have a look at the next command this is basically delete the object on the layer and then let's say I'll select this command and I will want to delete this and all the objects were on that layer will be deleted press Y yes and that's done so if you know that there are all the walls needs to be deleted so you can go and select this command and delete that in the next video I will talk about layer state so be sure to check that and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and thanks for watching guys I'll talk to you in the next video hi guys this is always back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series so in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can make layer states and restore them so the first thing what I want to do I want to explain what layer state means so layer state is basically turning off some layers and turning them back on let's say you want to get rid of some layers here you don't want to you don't want to see them on your drawing so what do you do you turn them off and then bring them back on so there's another good way to do it you can make a layer state to bring back your layers anytime you want so click here on your layer panel here you get the option unsaved layer state click here now you can you got two options there new layer state manage layer state so let's make the new layer state first click here and then I'm gonna give a name floor plan click OK and now you got the layer state so I wanna turn off few layers so I don't want this these layers so I use this command layer off I don't want these All right, yep. So these are the few things I don't want in my plan. So I just want to keep wall and window. So press spacebar. I'm going to go zoom extend. And now go back to your layer state and create a new layer. So this time I'm going to type a name state one. Okay. So now we got two layer states. So let's have a look what it does basically. Just click here, click here. And hover over your cursor there so in, now you can switch back between two layer states you can make as many as you want so I go back to my floor plan and anytime in a drawing I want to see the walls and door and windows only so I can switch back to my state one which will turn off all the other layers so this is very useful when you're working on a big project so you can make layer states to see what your drawing look like and that's it so just have a look at the manage layer states so you get the dialog box so here you can make new layers as many as you want you can edit them rename you can delete them if you got you can even export and import layers there. let's say you got these layers and then you have the same layers in other drawing so you can basically import from the other drawing and export this one so that's it for now guys thanks for watching i hope it will help you and subscribe to my channel if you like this video give this video a thumbs up as well and i'll talk to you guys in the next tutorial cheese Hi guys, this is always back with another tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll talk about altering object display order. So I've got a circle here, I've got a rectangle here, they both are hatch objects. So let's say I will move this rectangle about here. And what I want to do, I want to hide 
this rectangle part overlapping the green circle part at the back. So there is a command called dr. Basically it's a draw order but the alias is dr. So press spacebar and now I wanna doesn't matter which one I select first so let's say I'll select this rectangle and I press spacebar and I'll get two options. I've got two options here. It's first options above object, second under object. So it's front and back. If you want to send it to back or you want to bring it to front. So let's say you got four objects at the back, right? So you can send it all the way back with one command, but this time I want to use this. So I will use under object, press U, and spacebar, and now it's going to ask me select the reference object so that would be my reference object and i press spacebar as you can see that that the rectangle is gone backwards so let's let's um type a text here about there so i'll type a text and just a random text and now i will move this text about here so let's say i've got two objects on the top of this rectangle now. Just move my text a bit here. So so now I've got two objects. I've got this circled and I've got this text. So just type dr, select this object, and now we're gonna use front. So press front. So it does not matter how many objects were there, it is going to bring all the way up to the front. So I'll undo and we have a look one more thing so just say dr select this object and i'll select this above object so this time i'll select this press spacebar as you can see that the rectangle came in front of the green circle but not in front of the text so that's the difference between front and back and object under object and above object so one more thing let's say i will type dr select the text and I will select this back so it's gone backward now so now there's another command called text to front so text to front so text to front and I will type a for all and any text is there anywhere on your drawing and that will come at the front so there are a few commands that um, I can't cover that in this video uh, but for now that's it and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next tutorial welcome to another video in this video we're gonna look at how to work with groups so I'm just gonna zoom in here I've got this drawing open so I'm going to zoom in about here and now I'm gonna select this object as you can see that I've got a separated object I've got separated lines which made this um, chair so let's say I wanna make that chair as a group so the command is basically right there on your panel on the ribbon sorry so it says create a group so I'll select this command and I'll select this chair and now I can even give it a name or I can type a description so I just press spacebar for now and I select this and now you can see that this chair is basically a group why because it's got only one group now so it's basically group now so I can even copy that and I don't have to select the whole object so I just click anywhere on the object and it will select the whole group so maybe I'll copy this here and I can mirror that now MI from this midpoint to that point All right, I've got four chairs around the table now so let's say you want to edit the group so what you can do is um, you, there is a command here 
group selection off or on so if I just click here it will select the whole object so if I turn off this command and now I go back and select my group as you can see that um, I can't select the whole group because that group selection is off so that's why so I can go back and let's say I'll toggle this back on and my group will come back as it was so there's not many difference so if you want to edit the group you can do that by clicking this group edit command click here and you wanna click the group and now you can add object remove object so I'll just turn off my selection first and then I'll select this line and I'll just change the radius to show you guys alright and now I'll go and turn this on so as you can see that anything you do with the objects by turning this off and when you turn this back on the group will come back as a group so okay so now let's say I will draw another rectangle here I'll change my layer to zero first and I will mirror this maybe that doesn't look good so I'll delete that and I'll draw another rectangle like that and I'm going to mirror that okay so now I've got two objects which are not part of the group so I can do that as well so I can first of all I can turn off this selection and I wanna trim off these lines okay so now if I turn this on selection on and I select my group so you can see that these two rectangles are not part of the group so how do we add them so you select this command you go group edit first of all you can type the name of the group but I'm gonna select that and now I'm gonna click on add objects uh, I'll select this object that object that object that object and press spacebar and now if I go and select this it's a complete group now so that's how you can add or remove objects from your group okay so at any point you want to break your group so you can do that by just clicking this command ungroup and select that and the group has been exploded now as you can see that my group selection is on but it's been exploded so if I go and select this these are the the groups now that anything you change with this it doesn't really affect on any of the other group in your drawing so if I unselect if I check this and uh, if I click this and turn it off and I select this now as you can see there is no group exists in the drawing now because there are but we can't select them because that selection is off so I'll always keep that on so let's have a look at the shortcut commands now for the group you type group and you got the command but the ungroup type ungroup you got the ungroup there and just alias for the group is just type G and the group command will come up so alright that's it for this video guys that's how you work with your group so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next What's going on guys this is always back with another tutorial I'm gonna cover a few topics in this video I'm gonna cover the whole chapter regarding blocks so in this video I will talk about creating and inserting blocks using by and by block object properties redefining blocks exploding objects with explode and explode command dynamic um, designing a dynamic block accessing external block content redefining local blocks with global blocks so let's have a look how can we make a block first so on the ribbon I've got this block panel there I've got a command insert block create block block editor and a single which edits attributes in a block reference okay so now let's have a look how can we make a block so I'll zoom in and I want to make a block of this chair so click 
on this dialog box you get this um, click its uh, command you get this dialog box and every block need a name so I type the name chair 2 chair and maybe type sofa and then you can specify a base point on a screen or you can pick a point as well and you can type the values as well so I'll go and pick a point and I want to pick up this point it's very important that which point do you pick because at the time you're inserting those blocks then you gotta your grouping point would be that point the one you pick right now so I'll select this and as you can see that it's telling me the X and Y value as well and now I can select the object as well which is my block so as you can see I got no preview here so once I click this button and I go and select this and I press spacebar as you can see I've got the preview of the block now so it's telling me you can retain that you can convert to block and you can delete that and then make that as a block I can got two options here so I'll code that later so make sure that your block units are inches and I click OK so now if I click here now it's got a block now I've got a block here so now I delete that for now and what I do I'm gonna go and insert that block so now I'll click on this insert command and now in there you see all the blocks in your drawing so I go all the way down and as you can see that I've got this sofa block there which I just made so I click here and as you can see that I got the block but I have to specify insertion point and as you can see that my gripping point is where I selected the when I was making a block so it's very important that which point you select and I click here as you can see now my blocks are there so press spacebar again and then you can type a name uh, you know the previous use block was so far so the name was already there if you press spacebar again I right click then you can get the so far again and now I'll click and as you can see that I can even give the scale factor as well so I cover that in, in a few seconds okay so now let's have a look a few more features of inserting blocks okay if you click on this arrow button you get this um, drop down menu which gives you a different kind of colors of the blocks I'll discuss that, uh, that's basically inheritance, I'll cover that in a moment, So, but have a look at this, if I click on this more option, and now I get this dialog box, the shortcut key for that is, well, I'll go click this, I cancel, and I'll try I, press spacebar, and you get the same dialog box, okay, so here we got a few more options now, let's say I can insertion points specify on the screen, that's fine, or I can do type of values as well, Scale factor, I can specify on screen or I can give that value as well. Okay, so the rotation on screen, I'm gonna go and check that and I will click OK. And now I've got this block there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just drop it in the middle. And as you can see that I've got the rotation now. I can even try the angle because my auto is on, I can um, make a rotation for this block. So this is very useful. With typing I, we get four more options. Okay guys, so far we have learned how to create and insert blocks. So now I'm gonna show you a few more things. If you double click on your block, you get this edit block definition dialog box. Click OK. And then now you are in an editor block editor um, workspace, I guess. So you got all these new options here. You got a new palette, which are basically used in when you're making a dynamic block. But now this is that's it so I'll cover a few of these options in a minute so you can even check your dimension of your blocks align linear you can show some objects or hide them there's a few more options edit block save block and now I'm gonna go and close this for now and then it's gonna ask me if it's if I made any changes let's say if I make any changes let's say I'll turn this off all right uh, maybe I can just get that or I can just change this to under the layer let's say I will stretch, pull a stretch maybe a pick a point and now if I close this it's gonna ask me if I wanna save this or discard this but now I just discard this so now uh, we look at how to redefine blocks Alright, so now what I want to do, I want to copy this about one, two, three, and I want to mirror them at the that point. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how you can redefine blocks. So let's say you, I want this block 
So all these blocks are referenced by one block. So I double click on this one and I click OK. And now I'll select this arc and I change that to this. Okay. So now I'll close that and I'll save this changes to so far. As you can see that the reason why all the blocks are referencing to one block, that's why they all updated. They all updated to the arc. So that's how you can um, make changes to because anytime you make changes to one block, it's going to update the rest of the block which are referenced by that block. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'll show you another example, the power of the block. So now I'll come here, as you can see, this is not the part of the block, even though that looks like the same shape as we have on the right there. So what I want to do, I want to make a bit of, I'll delete this line. I'll delete this line and what I do now I'm gonna chain for that maybe delete this arc and just change that to make that a line okay so get rid of stuff here All right, and then just mirror that to from the midpoint to that point. Draw another line here. And just for the reference, I just want to draw a line here. And I'll copy that. One, two, three, four. Alright, so that's the new chair we got. So what I want to do, I want to make another block. So type B, press spacebar. And now the name we have on the previous block was sofa. So I type sofa and now I'll pick a point. So as I remember that the pick point was about here for the previous block. So I click that. It gives me the coordinate values on X and Y axis. And now I can specify object I'll select this object right click and then I'll delete this object instead of converting to block I'm gonna delete this so that will still make a block but it will delete this uh, object so I'll click OK and now I get this options here redefine the block I don't redefine the reason why we had a sofa uh, block before so it's asking me if it wants to redefine so I'll click on redefine block and it deleted that chair but let's go to right. So what happens here? As you can see, the power of the block is it's all been updated. The name basically, because of the name, same name, it updated all the blocks. So that's how you can redefine blocks. Okay, now we're going to look at two different methods of for exploding blocks. All right, let's have a look. How can we explode? But let me explain first. What I want to do, I want to... Um, to keep these two chairs the way they are, but I want to change this, um, these all four and four eight layer air chairs to without this arm resting. So, what I can do, I can explode this block. So, I'll type X E explode, or you can type, I can click um, this explode command. I click on this object and select that, and then as you can see, that they have been exploded now. Okay, so once they've been exploded, there's another command called explode. E, not for E, but X, P, L, O, D. That's a bit old command, but does the same thing. And, okay, so now these two chairs are basically unique. They are not part of the block anymore. So what I can do, I can just double click to any block and click OK. And now what I want to do, I want to just get rid of this. Arm resting and just make another line here. Change that to okay. So now I close block editor and I save. So as you can see, that by exploding few objects from the block, I could keep those shades the way they were, and then now I've got new block with a new style of the chair without arm resting. So this is how you can use explode command and redefine your block. In the next video, I'm going to discuss dynamic blocks. So make sure to check that out as well. All right, for now, peace out.
Take care and uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hi guys, this is always Welcome back to another tutorial of your AutoCAD series. This tutorial is very important because we're going to discuss dynamic block. What dynamic block can help us is let's say you've got doors and windows in your drawing and you've got 100 doors to do it so I don't really recommend you manually go and make each and every door so there should be a better solution for it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go and show you I've got three doors here I'll check my measurement by selecting the measure command this door is about 2 feet 6 inch that door is about I think 3 feet Yep, and then that door is about 3 feet and 6 inches. So I want to make one door and I want to change that door to every dimension, whatever I want in the whole drawing. So I've got this door here, uh, dimension, I'll check it by DI, distance command. This is about, I'm just going to delete that, I'm going to make a new door. I'll check the distance from this line to this true point. 6, so uh, I'll start a polyline command, make a door 2.6 and then go one inch further and 2.3 and type C and then close. Make an arc, 2 point arc, start from the midpoint and then just drop it in the middle. Alright, so you got your door done. Now we're going to make a block, so type B spacebar and then say door D whatever the name you want to call it I'm gonna go and pick a point my pick point would be the base point would be this and select the object I will select the object and now once I'm selected the object you make sure that um, doesn't matter which one you choose but you can choose only one at the time so I delete because I don't want this door to stay here so the, the main thing is you need to check this on open in block editor so I check this on click OK so that door will open in a block editor now so I've got this door here so what I want to do I want to add a flipping functionality a rotational functionality and scaling functionality to it go to your parameters in a palette click on flip and now the base point would be select the base point right here and then second point which is the end point of reflection line would be that one and then just click about here now you got this arrow button it's better that you move it about in the middle and go to your parameters and flip one more time select this space point second point would be this point leave your text about here this is basically doesn't really matter it's specify a label location does not really matter because this is doing nothing basically it's just the name of the um, parameters so I click about here and I've got second one so I just click here and just move it about in the middle here okay so now we're gonna add the functionality to, to it so go to your action tab in your this palette click on flip now it's going to ask me to select parameters so as you know that we made two parameters so I'm going to select the first one and then it's going to ask me to select object so this is going to be my object press spacebar done now go back to your flipping in action tab click on this parameter and then select the whole object done so we got two functionality there okay so now let's add some rotational why don't we go and just check it out how does that work so you gotta close that and then save type i and from the list i'm gonna select this door d what we made before actually i selected the other one so i click here and i've got two functionality here so i can flip so i double click on that which gives me this dialog box and i go back to my block editor so now let's add a rotational functionality to it. So we go to parameters, click on rotate. It's going to ask me to specify base point. I'll click this base point. The radius would be about here. And then it's going to ask me the base angle basically. So I'm going to press spacebar for accepting zero as a base angle. Now we need to add some functionality to it. Go to your action tab in this palette, 
click on rotate select your parameter and select the whole object press spacebar it's done the most important um, what I recommend is doing that you need to add a scaling factor because with the scaling factor you can always increase or decrease your size so it means that you have to make one door in your whole drawing and you all set so you keep adding a block to any size of the door and you you're good to go all right so let's go and get a parameter click on linear add a linear parameter to a block so select that line first and then add point would be this line and I drop it the label would be about here okay so let's go add some functionality to it go to your action palette sorry tab and I click on scale select this parameter and now select the whole object and press spacebar and you're all good to go so close block editor click on save changes and I'm gonna delete this now and what I want to do, I want to come down here and I don't know the dimension of the door here. So I'll type I spacebar and select my door D, click OK and I'll drop it about here. And then my rotational angle would be here. And then let's say I'll click on the door and I've got flipping option both sides. I've got left and right flipping option and I've got angle option here let's say I can rotate this so I want to rotate here I can rotate that there and let's drop the same block about here so top I spacebar select the D click OK and now I'm gonna drop it here so I'm just gonna for now I'm gonna drop like that okay and I select that I'm gonna flip it to the downwards and I flip it to this side okay so now I'm gonna add see that so what I want to do I want to basically select that and I'm gonna flip that side and I will move this to this side okay so now I can oops I've got to move this to the middle midpoint and now I want to select that and I can just increase the size this is so good all right i've got this door done let's add this door now so type i spacebar select that door start from here angle would be midpoint and then just click here and then just grip that arrow button and then just drag it down so let's check the dimension of our doors go to mirror select and this point i've got three feet and i've got three feet both sides so it's a perfect door now <clears throat> let's check this one excuse me and I'll click here 2.6 2.6 all set that one's all right so I'll check the distance again 2.6 3.6 all set I click here and I want to flip that to this side I want to basically flip that and then I will move that to I can move that here Alright, so all good. So this was about dynamic blocks. You can make amazing blocks with using this um, block editor panel. I've got another video coming out which I will discuss the whole functionality of these parameters. I'll go through each and every one and show you what to do with these um, parameters and actions. And in that video, I'm, I'm including these as well. So be sure to check that out. Once I'm done with that video, I'll drop the link for that. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up as well, which is going to help me a lot. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Hi guys, this is Awais back with another tutorial of AutoCAD series. So in this video I'm gonna discuss two things I'm gonna discuss design center and a content explorer so what basically is design center is to access design center on your ribbon go to your insert panel and then click on here design center but I'm gonna show you the shortcut keys ADC type ADC enter and you get this dialog box which is called a design center 
so I'm just gonna go back so I can show you where you need to go in the design center here you got your um, library of your computer you can access any folder in your computer you can even access a local network drive which you can access you can see that here as well so the main thing what we're gonna do is you need to go this sample let's say I'll just minimize that for now you need to go to this sample folder maximize it in the, in the sample folder you need to maximize English dash US maximize that and then there you can find this design center so click on that and then just expand that as well so in design center you got few drawings made by AutoCAD already so let's say you are building a kitchen stuff let's say you got refrigerator you got your cooking stuff there so let's say you need to make a cabinet right well in most cases that you would like to make a cabinet but in 2d drawings we don't really show what we are making so we can use these cabinets made by AutoCAD already so it's free for us to use so just click on this kitchen or you can expand that All right, once you expand that you got few more properties of this drawing you have access to blocks you got access to design view styles dimension you got access to layers you can even import layers from this drawing to your drawing but in this video I'm gonna talk about blocks so just click on this and then in this uh, window you get this blocks you got that you can access block here as well but I prefer using it here so I'll just click on that you need to double click to open that block so in that file we got these blocks made for us and it's very easy to use so we got base cabinet we got dishwasher we got phone jack so let's say in the kitchen area right I want to use this microwave so it's already been made and in 2d drawings all we have to do is just use them so to bring these blocks to your drawing you can do it two ways you can just click and drag and it just drop it there or you can just double click and it will pop up the insert menu and you can type the name you can change that name to your block and click OK which is going to let you draw but it's going to give you a few more options once you do that you get the um, option of rotation angle I want to keep that zero and I press spacebar now which will drop that if you drag that it will come automatically on a zero degree angle so let's show you a few more uh, files we got here I use kitchen all the time because I work for architecture stuff so if you work for electrical stuff let's say you got this all basic electronics so I expand that and go to the blocks so you got battery capacitor I don't know about this stuff but just to show you guys you can use these as well all right, let's go to home space planner if you expand that go to your blocks you got that you got a lot of stuff here which you can use um, for your drawing let's say I've got dining set here I've got desk here if you click on that once it will you can see the preview of that block here you got the sofa you got piano baby a lot of stuff here so all you have to do is just drag them or double click to insert as a block so this is about um, design center I hope you like it all right, now let's talk about Content Explorer. It's a new service that uh, was introduced in, I think, Adria 2012. It's basically, you can access internet and there's, of, there's thousands of um, objects already made by AutoCAD or any other people who upload that for you guys to use. So I'll close that and I'll type Content Explorer. Oops, I just opened that again. Well, content, type content, it will finish up the command for you. Click here. All right, so now I've got this um, dollar box here, which is called Content Explorer. I'm just going to increase the size of it so you guys can see that. All right, so in this folder, you got a few folders. Let's say you got a lot of products here. You got beams, casework, ceiling system, chairs. Trust me, there's like thousands of them available here all right so now to access the internet library you need to make sure that you are signed in your Autodesk 360 and you have access to the library 
let's find some chairs all right so i will first let me show you you have to click on this arrow button and go to your autodesk seek so make sure you're not on an autodesk content service if you are in there then you have to search through your um local library let's say you got a few stuff in your drawing um, design center but you don't know where to find them so you can search for them right there just type the name and it will bring up for you but in this video i'm just going to access the online autodesk seek library so i'll double click on these chairs all right once i click it's going to go browse the internet and show me products whatever available let's say i've got this chair i like this chair all right so to access that to bring that in your drawing so you got two you can see the number of files here as well so double click that it will open that drawing so in this um chair you got one 2d file and you got your 3d file so you can use both so let's say i want to use this 2d chair in this room all right so to bring that you can just drag that it's so easy and just leave your cursor there and now it's gonna ask you for the block name because it's gonna convert that chair to a block and it's bringing that from the internet so it's gonna ask you to enter a name so I'll type chair chair one maybe I had a another block before so I click OK it's telling me that chair one already exists so I have to redefine it click on yes and once you click on your drawing it's gonna ask you to enter the scale factor but I want to keep that one so I'll just press enter now it's asking me scale factor y so I just enter again now I can I just zoom in to show you what's happening basically in the drawing so now after applying my scale factor I've got this um, rotation it's asking me to specify rotation but I want to keep that zero you can even type whatever the angle you want but I'm just gonna type enter now it's asking me to block attributes I can type part number options I can give it tags or whatever you need so I'll just click OK and there you go we got the chairs from the internet like the you the stuff you available in design center they're not really good and they've been there for like since AutoCAD 2000 so but on the internet there's a lot of cool stuff there let me show you the 3d model of that I just drag that here and just drop it there it's actually syncing that 3d model because the size is a bit increased size is a bit large so type the name blah 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 enter enter scaling factor yes okay yes and rotation angle zero done click OK and then you got your chair so you go to your 3d go back to your home panel on your ribbon and change let's say you hold down your shift key and press your mouse wheel and just move so I don't want to go to my 3d modeling workspaces I've got uh, series coming up for the 3d modeling so you can see that as well all right so let's go for font 3d basic and in the realize tab you can change that to space gray there you go guys you got your chair and that's it that's it for this tutorial i hope you like the information and if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next video hey what's going on guys this is always back with another tutorial this video is going to be a bit longer because i'm gonna try and covering a lot of stuff in this video so let me tell you what I'm gonna cover in this video I'm gonna cover designing a symbol with text placeholder designing attributes definitions designing a block with attributes and then we'll look at tables how to create them how to style them how to style a tables title with text adding field to table alright so let's look at designing a symbol with text placeholder so what I want to do, I want to go to my home panel on the ribbon. So let's have a look. Do we have a text layer? 
so we don't have it so I'm gonna make one click on layer properties create a new layer type text and we give a color just leave that color as white so just close that and now I'm gonna make my text color text layer as um, as my default layer alright so I'm just gonna zoom in I'm gonna type here living room and down here I'm gonna make a rectangle which is going to be a placeholder so I type text this is a text command we have in AutoCAD and down here we got two options I'll discuss them in a moment so let's talk about the justify so I click on justify he here you get a lot of um, alignment options so I'm gonna select middle center click that and now it's gonna ask me select the middle point of the text so I'll select some arbitrary point here I'm just gonna eyeball it uh, and then the height would be about let's say that would be 1.5 yeah 1.5 yeah and I click here you can type that value as well but that's fine so you can give a rotational angle now so I'm gonna keep that straight so I keep that zero and now I can type a text so I type living area enter enter it will finish the command so now I'm gonna use my move command I'm just gonna bring it here and now I'm gonna copy that and just make a copy about here and now to edit that text all you have to do is just double click on it which will go back to text editor and then you can start typing the text again so I'm gonna type room 10 or 1 or 2 enter enter which will finish the command and now I want to just move it a little bit down okay so I'll just draw a rectangle by REC command and then I'm just gonna move that here but I want to justify that in the middle and center so how can I do that I can basically draw a line from this point to this point and then I just move my text select from the middle and then hold down shift key right click and select insert so the insertion point would be about in the middle right there oops it went so far all right so justify that by eyeballing it so let's have a look a few more options in a text command let's type text and then you got this alignment option you can justify them by left center right align middle just want to show you one uh, fit options here let's delete this and then go back to your text click on justify click on fit now it's gonna ask you to first base points so I'll select that and then second base one is that one all right and then I press enter and now I can type text with this command with this fit justification what it's gonna do if I keep typing oops if I just keep typing it's gonna keep fitting the text within that area so let's say I wanna type here about so many stuff so I'll type text and I will justify that and use fit select this like this so I wanna type a bigger sentence here so if I use the normal if I don't justify that it's gonna go over the room so I wanna keep that so I'm type but room one on one and blah 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 so it's gonna keep justifying that which is really great okay so now let's have a look at the text style command so for that I'm gonna go to my annotation panel and here you got few text styles here you can click on this manage text style and it will take you to the text editor so you can set a new you can create a new style type a name mine okay and now double click on this select that and then you can give a font name you can give a font style here you can specify the height and all that stuff so type a text again and go to your style so here you can type mine and we'll select that text style
Hey guys, what's going on? This is always back with another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can make tables and add data to it. So let's start by making a table first. So you go to your annotate panel on the ribbon and there you get the ta table panel here. So I click on this table, which will bring that dialog box here. On the left, you got this table style. If you can make a new table style, you can choose the current one. You can modify them. Down here, you've got, if you wanna link any data, you can do that as well. So for now, basically, we're gonna make a table. So I wanna keep that three columns by six rows and then set cell styles to tiles, header, and data. So the table is structure is basically based on title, header, and data. So I click OK, and now I select a, um, arbitrary base point, so insertion point, basically. I click that, now it's gonna ask me type a title to it. Type drawing limits, uh, drawing information. Now you can type your title, I will say room area dimension and then I click outside and then as you can see that our table has been done but it's too small, we can't really see that. The reason why we can't really see that because the default unit aren't set to this um, scaling factor so you need to increase that. So what do you do? According to this drawing, according to my quarter uh, factor, I have to scale it by 48. So I select that, I select the base point closer to my table, and I type 48, enter, and our table is done. I'll just move that here. All right, so now let's talk about a bit more about tables. All right, if I go here and I click on this arrow button I get this dialog box which takes me to table style well I've got only one table style for now but I want to make a new one I click on new and I type a name I'll give a name my table style okay now you get this dialog box so as, as I told you that this table is basically based on data header and title so you can choose um, Let's say if I choose title, all right? And then I can, in the general properties, I've got this fill color. I can define a fill color to it. I can align the text. I wanna align the text um, to maybe top left to show you guys, but I don't really recommend that. But you can type it. You can specify a type as well. You can specify margins from top to bottom in the in a cell. So now let's go and go to your text. Okay, so text, if you click here, as you can see, you got only three text styles here. You can, if you wanna make a new one, you wanna change the text of it, you can click on this box, it will take you to the text style. So once you're in the text style, you can modify the current one. I'm gonna just modify my current one and I'll change that to, let's say, Time New Roman. That's the most popular text style. I can specify font style, bold, bold italic, italic, and regular. All right, so I can do up and down, backwards. There's a lot of common features you see here. So I apply and I click on set current and I close this. As you can see, if I wanna add that to my header, I can do that as well. I have to go to header and then now I can go to general, I can apply the effects to it. Text, I'm gonna change, I've got three of them here. I can apply that same text style to the header as well. I can change the text color. Let's say I wanna change this to maybe green. Green looks great, so. All right, so now I'll click OK, and now I've got, we got our text style now. And now I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna make it set current close and now if you can see now basically over select your table and then go here and then change that to my table so now you've got your text applied on your table very easy 
and very useful tables are basically used when you have to um, write any data about your write any information about your drawing for the client all right so let's look at a few more features of the table if you click on this and then you see that you are in a table cell panel now it's a new panel it's a temporary panel for just to modify this table so what I can do with it all right if I click here and as you can see that I've got this insert above I'm in the row panel so I can insert a row to it I can delete those rows I can insert below delete them insert columns left or you can delete them so well let me just type U and I go back to my table so whatever you're selecting whatever the cell or panel or sorry cell or any column or whatever row you select that will work with that way so if you select here and now if you click on left so it's gonna make a new column between these two columns so just keep that in mind you can merge those cells let's say I'll merge these two click merge and I can just merge row I can just merge column so I can but now I'm gonna merge it all so as you can see I've merged all the cells here <laughs> alright so next what we got here I've got this styling here one more time that's the same text styles you can do that as well you can edit borders well, well I'm just gonna make it a bit more thicker so I've got these borders now around the, your table if I click outside as you can see that uh, we got the border applied so all right so you've got your cell locking you can lock the cell if you got big and bigger table now you got insert if you want to insert any block to it so you can do that as well you can add any fill to it so I've done the, uh, the previous videos um, in the past about these if you want to learn about these check them out as well so I can if you know the spreadsheet or Microsoft Excel or any spreadsheet program you know what this formula means so I can even, I can even um, add these formulas to my cells or columns so let's say I'll add this to this column whoops I'll select this column I'm just gonna add the formula to it and to add them just now I've got a6 and c6 so what is a6 a6 here and then c6 here so what I'm gonna do I want to just add it that to a5 to a6 type a five now I've got that formula here so if I go back to my this cell I'll type 5 go back down I've got 6 and now if you go to this cell as you can see we got 11 so it actually um, it applied the addition to these two cells so well that's about it for the tables um, I'm going to talk about um, some more features of the table in the next video so make sure to check that out as well you've got free alignment options here if you select the whole column you can align that to whatever is options there so check them out as well um, all right guys thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next video i hope you like this video and if there is any question let me know i'll reply to your comments and i'll talk to you guys in the next video Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Always back with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a layout. So to make a layout, first of all, what you have to do is go to your option. I'm going to go to my option by typing OP, enter, and now in the display tab, you need to uncheck these two and you need to make sure that you got four of them are checked. So the first one says display layout and the model tabs, which are basically these tabs here. Display printable area, that would be in the uh, layer of one. And display paper background that's fine display paper shadow that's fine too and you gotta click apply click
click OK. So now, let's say you can um, access your layout by hovering over your cursor here. If you don't see that here, you can go to View Menu and turn on this File tab. So you will see these things. So I'll turn off this File tab. Now you can hover over your cursor, you can see your model, you can see your Layout 1 and Layout 2. And in there you got two options, you got Plot and Publish. But alternatively you can access these things over here in the top, uh, sorry, bottom right corner. You can click and it will take you to your Layout 1. Layout 2 is there. So if I right click on it, as you can see I've got a few more options here. I've got Paid Setup Manager, Plot, Drafting, Standard Setup. So we're gonna look at the Paid Setup Manager. You can click here and access the Paid Setup Manager, but alternatively you can go to Output Menu and click on this Paid Setup man uh, Manager. All right, so I'm gonna click on this, which will give me a dialog box Paid Setup Manager there. So I've got two, um, I've got one model there. What what I want to do? I want to go back to layout one because I'm setting up layout one, and then click the page setup manager. So now you got layout one there and layout two. So I'm gonna modify layout one to as you know that. Just click on modify, and it will give you a dialog box where you can modify the plotter. So now on the top you got printer slash plotter. So basically it will get you to select your printer if you have your local printer installed in your computer the driver of that printer will show in this list so but for now I'm gonna select DW FA ePlot PE PC3 so I'll select that that's like electronic plotter which comes with AutoCAD so I'll click on that and then I'm gonna select my paper size to Alright, select this Archie D 36 by 24 inches. And now, as you can see, the overview of the paper changed. So now, plot scale, I'm gonna keep that one by one because one inch, one um, inch in this drawing is equal to one inch in the real world. I can even change that to millimeter, and if I wanna change that to centimeter, I can type 10 here. So I will change that to that. But for now, I'm gonna keep that. I'll just type one and change that to inches okay so now our plotter is set now click OK and I'm gonna close this now you can see that our page has been set up but our drawing is looking very small so I'm gonna configure that so what I have to do I'll go and make a new layer I'll delete that first I'll make that new layer I'll call it viewport enter and then just double click that to make it current and close that and now there's a command called mView and now all you have to do is just click this point and then just like making rectangle and select the second point and now you have basically set up your viewport to print that if you want to learn about how to print that on your plotter with the exact dimension then check out my next video from my playlist and thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.